All right, it's time. The grand finals best of seven match between the two GOAT contenders. The two people whose names come up more often than not when people talk about who's the greatest of all time. The two players that we don't get to see play nearly enough. It's several in the top left representing NC Esports. And his opponent, Maru, in the bottom right. A Terran who looks to have the best form in the world right now. He defeated and crushed and destroyed people in the season finals, did Maru. Maru won Asus Rock. Maru has been on an absolute tear. And we've never we've never questioned that Maru's the greatest GSL player of all time with how consistent and how many times he's won. There are so many times he has done so well in GSL, but there are so many times he has flopped in international events, whether it be online or on LAN. Oh, he's jet lagged. Oh, he's tired. Oh, he, he doesn't have as much planning. It's a weekend. On. There's been excuses made for him. It's time for Maru to say, fuck you people making excuses for me. I'm the best Terran in the world. I don't need you to make excuses. And in the last few months, he's been taking that performance out to the big big stage he's been saying dude i'm gonna i'm gonna smash everybody in these big online cups rogue get slapped down dark get slapped down Cyril, rain or you guys can't stand to stand up to me trap get out of here you suck which is kind of obviously said tongue in cheek because all those players are literal gods but maru has been on a tear and if he can defeat Cyril here in this best of seven grand final then that will be absolutely massive so this is a really cool chance for, for Maru to cement his legacy, but I mean, it's Errol, it's Errol. And uh, he also beat Maru in the group stage. Some of you may have seen us cast that one. Uh, it was a best of three, it was a two to one victory for Serral. And the crazy thing for me was that on this map, especially Serral just broke in with Hydraling Bane Viper. I was like, is he gonna go Broodlords? Is he gonna use Lurkers? I don't think Lurkers are that good versus Maru because he's so good at defending him with ghosts. And then he literally just killed him. Like he was like, oh, I don't care, man. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bop a nerd. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just bop a nerd, okay? I'm just gonna roll over you with big Hydraling Bane. You can't stop it. You're too spread out on this map. The spaces are too wide open. And so I do wonder whose map pick this was. Cause there's an argument for the Terran picking this map and, and saying, hey, it's a short rush distance. I can get you killed in the early game with sharp pushes. Maru showed in the quarterfinals versus Raynor a very good tank bunker push on the high ground, but... Oh, he gets a drone kill. That's a good start. He does lose his Reaper for it, though, so I think Serral's okay with that trade. Oof. Needle to the face. Tough way to go. That's going to be a 2 on one opening for Maru. So two barracks into a factory, a starport. He's going to have Stim, and then two medevacs coming out at a time. Always start the Stim before the starport. As the little tidbit we see noobs mess up all the time with this build order. Myself included. So anyway, like I said, guys, Serral's made an adjustment. Um, against Raynor, he tank pushed up here and built bunkers up here. And it's such an unengageable position because there's just, you put tanks up against the ledge, you build a bunker here, they can't get in. And and Raynor basically died from that push. Now, Serral has immediately gone for the third in a safer location. Does he go even further and take a fourth down here? That would be crazy. Maybe he does the double hatch. A lot of people, rather than building the macro hatch, they'll go fourth base and fifth base. Raynor, I mean, Serral, Zerg player. Sorry, they all look the same. I'm a little racist. Uh, Roach Warren is, 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 is coming in. And this is a Ravager. Wait, no, no link speed. He is still droning. He's playing pure Roach. I was doing this the other day. Pure Roach. Oh, this is sick. He's going to play a, a Roach Ravager aggressive style. No link speed. No commitment to Zerglings past a few spotters. Ooh. Oh, no, oh, Serral. Oh no, he has five drones following another drone. I don't know how long they were idle for, but that's, that's, ooh, that's messy. Bit of a mistake there. <clears throat> so we got Stim almost finished. Double Metavax on the way as well. Five queens are out. So you don't want to go too high on queens, but keep in mind, if he loses one or two, Serral has almost no anti-air. So he's really got to be in position to shut down these moves. Now, seeing no Hellions yet, I think Serral can assume, oh, yep, got to watch out for a 2 one, one That'll hit me about 520. So you can see he's building three Roaches, seven Roaches. You want to go up to at least 10 Roaches to defend a, a double Marine attack like this. And he even sees it coming and gets the Zergling out. The Zergling taunting. He's like, you guys suck. 
you suck. The Marine injects some drugs and decides to chase that Zergling down. Serral's like, okay, come and get me. Come and get me. You don't want to weaken your push, do you? Oh, Serral tracking this perfectly. He's got eight roaches out. He's building five more. Apparently, when you're playing against Maru, you take no chance. There's 13 roaches to be 100% safe. He's got two queens in the main. And the roaches are kind of here, ready to rejoin in the main if he picks up and drops there. But otherwise, it's just roaches going to defend on the ground. He's going to get rid of some of the creep. You don't want to lose too many creep tumors because remember, your queen count's kind of low. He immediately pulls back up. Queens say no. Maru! Oh my god, if he loses that, that would be huge. Oh, I actually think the stutter step was a slight mistake there from Serral. Maybe could have just kept attacking the whole time. Marine Widow Mine drop there coming in. Double Evo Chamber. Down about 5 minutes 30 here, just after that. And going to get that third base saturated roach speed on the way. A very important upgrade. Going to allow the roaches to keep up with those marines. And behind this, we've got 1-1 one, one and tanks. Now, if Maru's learnt anything from years of me shouting at him losing games and throwing matches versus Rogue, is he should take this third base. Now, why should he take that third base? Because then it's got more of a choke point coming into it there and here. And he can, he can set up his defenses in this one kind of central area. Now... I say that and I'm looking at it and I'm like, should he though? I mean, both bases kind of suck on this map. Ugh, I don't even know. I'm not even sure. Normally I'm pretty sure about don't take the front third, take the one on, in, in a straight line. On this map, it's not the most defended. It does get one drone with the Widow Mine. Bit of cute damage there, bit of an annoyance. Serral's got a much bigger supply right now though. And he is going to take the front third like he always does. Now, you could argue that a tank up here covers a fair amount as long as you don't build depots down there. So there's two mistakes that Maru usually makes versus Roach players, which I always criticize him for. Number one, he takes all of his Marines and tanks, attacks across the map, gets killed by Roach Ravager and throws the game. Because Roach Ravager is an early to mid game composition. It's very good if you attack into it. Whereas if you sit behind a wall, keep your tank safe, you'll never lose to it. So he, the problem, he other, the other problem he makes is he's always oh, walled in his base. His SCVs can't get down there. Bit of a mistake for him. Uh, finally, he realizes that he should lower that depot as well. Is don't build depots. Normally, he builds heaps of depots at his third to reinforce that position to make it harder for the Zerg to attack. Problem is, as the Terran, that means if your position gets broken here, even once, you lose your, your, your supply block like hell. Now, I think the one thing that's working for him is I don't think Serral wants to commit to the attack because he has an early infestation pit. Mm, no, I think he kind of has to anyway. But yeah, Maru is making all the mistakes that I normally criticize him for. And he's such a good player, he could still win. But normally you want to keep your tanks really safe, really far back if possible. And if you lose those tanks even one time, you might just die. Now, he's setting up for a bit of a marine flank on the Roach Ravager. Oh, I don't like this attack angle for Serral. But maybe, maybe the tanks are just exposed enough that it's fine. He gets rid of one tank, loses a bunch of marines there, and his depot's in the open and... Predictably, Mar can can someone who speaks Korean please message Maru and tell him to stop making this exact mistake? He does. He knew exactly what was happening, and it's the exact same reason why Maru isn't 16 and zero versus Rogue in Grand Finals, which he should be. And yet he loses to Rogue a lot when he shouldn't, and it's because he always takes the front base and fucks up. And it's such a predictable mistake. If he kept his tanks on the high ground from the beginning, didn't build the depots down there, he'd be fine here. But it's all about. Protecting your tanks, protecting your bio, and getting a critical mass. You do not want to fight at this stage. You want to lift your third, pull back your workers. As long as you survive, this army scales like crap for several. And I don't know why Maru is so insistent on taking the more exposed third out in the open and throwing his tanks away on the low ground. Now, in this case, he only lost one tank. And Serral does take a big volley there. Serral's trying to chip away the units, but that was a bad fight for Serral. Good one for Maru. Now, Serral has a fourth up. He needs to take a fifth, and he needs gases. So because Serral spent so much gas on Roach Ravager, he's playing that I'm not going to let you take a third base style. But he needs a fifth base to get gases up, because his Viper Lurker transition is going to be very gas heavy. And that's something which Serral has not prepared too well for. His fourth base gas only now getting up. And pretty big uh, drop coming down, because he's going to pull Serral out of position. Serral, as long as he splits just some units to do this, he can still deny this. Now, Maru's going to move his whole army down, which does expose himself to losing it again. Serral should come from the top angle, though, not from this ramp. And this choke point a little tight here. Maru, though, he's undefended right now. Wait, he's going to flank with the bio. Is this a crazy move for Maru? I think it is, but it just might pay off as he comes back. But two more siege tanks have gone down, and I think Maru knows he needs the third base up, but... His tank's stuck on the high ground. He's going to siege that up there. 
Uh, if these tanks get taken out, he's in trouble. He's got to pull the SCVs. If he can protect the tanks, he, he could still get back in this game. One tank falls. No, it doesn't! Messed up Biles for Serral, and Serral has to fall back. A bad fight for Serral. He gets only one tank, 11 SCVs in some of the bio. He's got to keep those Ravages alive and transition onto the next wave. So a great fight there for Maru. Just that tail end of it. But uh, yeah, definitely very dangerous here. Now, I only rant about this this much because I've ranted about it so many times before. I'll stop. The fact that he survived is good. If it was Rogue, he'd be dead. Serral, not quite the same killer instinct of Rogue, I think. Also not as greedy and getting towards his push timings. But Serral's still in a dominating position. He's going to try and keep trading here. Biles on the tank, take it down. Doesn't quite get the medevacs. I thought he might clip those there. But now, okay, more tanks are going to defend this command center. Roach Ravager comes in. Another tank will go forward. He's shoving in. Another tank goes down. The Biles are landing. He gets eight more SCVs. I mean, this... Feels like Serral can just trade like this for days. He's got Vipers as well, and it's uh, it's still going to be a win here for Serral. Serral's very good at dancing on the edge of range and utilizing his bile over and over again. He doesn't stand and fight when his bile's on cooldown. He just looks for the kills, and... Oh, he doesn't quite get the command center. Mass repair, very good for Maru, but he is still dead. And Serral is going to take a very nice game one victory here. Notice how he pulls back when it's only Ravages, because he doesn't want to lose his expensive units. Starting plus three carapace now. He's going to gather energy with those vipers. And the creep is denying his base from landing. Oh, Maru is in dick town right now, man. Maru is in dick town. Now, keep in mind, guys, the mistakes I've been pointing out from Maru are the exact same mistakes Clem makes every game in the same scenario. One day, one of them is actually going to tell me I'm wrong and explain why. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to then point to their win record when they play the front third and move their tanks to the low ground and laugh at them. Ah, oh, Pig, stop being so judgmental. And Goki, Maru's a god. Guys, don't get me wrong. Even if Maru loses this game, which he absolutely should from here, he's still a god and he will fight back in the next games. This is not something Serral will repeat in this series. Maybe he'll try Roach Ravager one more game, but I doubt it. I think this is special for this map because there's big wide open areas. The bases are naturally exposed, even if he takes the other third. And it's a bit of a surprise tactic. Now, I would argue Maru spotted this very early when there was no link speed and Roaches defending, so it wasn't the most surprising, but it was a surprise in that Maru wasn't expecting it going into the map, so he wasn't able to plan for it before then. Now, he does have a great spready of tanks. Um, where's the Vipers? Where are they? The Vipers have not really... I mean, he's gone back to get more energy. I'd like to see some more of Ducks coming in, some more trading. A fourth command center is getting up. Several. I've seen him actually against Clem lose games where he didn't realize the fourth base was up in this exact same scenario and Serral's still on Mass Roach Ravager. Yeah, he's adding Zerglings to take the tank shots. He's adding Lurkers in there, but there's absolutely a chance for Maru to get back in this game and I'm telling you, it would be a godlike comeback. To come back from here against Serral would be absolutely bonkers, but Maru is known for locking down his shit and surviving when he has no business surviving. Look at that. Oh, Serral. A little slow to respond there. Does pull it home. Okay, we got some abducts coming in. Oh, I like the Vikings. They're gonna they're gonna try and kill that Viper. If he doesn't fly back, he's gonna lose it. Vikings not realizing it stopped there. Now the drop coming in, not finding anything. Spore zoning that out. He does have 10 gases up to several. But Maru actually has survived. He's weathered the storm. He's got mass tank bio out. He needs to really focus on his bio production, I think, right now. But adding the Vikings just as a sort of in-between. Vipers can abduct Vikings and shoot them down if he has enough Hydras, but he didn't have any Hydras. He's only building them now, and <laughs> Hail Mary Bile's not going to connect. He's going to attack the top. This could be big. Could be, or it could be a throwaway of units. I don't think he can just YOLO it. Yeah, he can maybe siege it, but Liberator says no. And look at that. Lurker on the high ground. Oh, I like that Lurker. That's a real nice Lurker. Maru can take it down with a tank and a scan. It does take four tank shots? Three tank shots to kill a Lurker. Big army running down here for Serral, but he's kind of disarray. It's just a handful of units, and Serral not quite finding the, 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 the business end of the stick here. It feels like he's taking a bit too much time. He's adding Banelings. He's swapping into Ling Bane Hydra. I don't know if I can get behind this. I feel like Serral is giving up all the momentum he gained in the early game. And that crazy comeback I was talking about might just happen. It could absolutely happen. That Lurker does get taken out there. Ghosts are on the way. He's adding more barracks now. He's going to get a few more tech labs for more Ghost Marauder production. 
Ah, uh, this is actually a situation where Serral's got to get rid of these Ravages and Roaches. These are shit units that he's sitting on right now. This top base is barely defended, but he hasn't been able to bust it. He really needs Thanks to get some momentum. Box. Serral's taking way too long in this game. Nice Abduct, nice Blinding Cloud. Planetary, and of course, only able to shoot in melee range with that Blinding Cloud. An accidental unburrow, I think, there. Blinding Cloud would be nice here on this bio, and I think that should be a dead base. He Blinding Cloud's the Planetary Fortress. And you can see with the spines coming out the back of the planetary, you can't repair it. Now the lurkers could force him to back off. The ravages are going to come in. Does bile down one of those siege tanks, pulls back the lurkers. He leaves one behind the base as a bit of a harassment just to be a nuisance to clean up. And Maru is still broken. It looks like finally Cyril finds the finishing blow there. So uh, very nicely done. I think he's going to stabilize and, and just kind of get everything out he's got a sixth base on the way yeah Sar Sarah will be able to close this but uh i've got to i got to be critical guys so so the two things and we've seen this going for years now i've analyzed it so many times in the last few years every time maru and rogue play since i think 2018 or 2017 katavitsa and a few gsl run-ins um as well as Raynor's done it to, to clem a few times and it's kind of the same story um, Mass Roach Ravager is it's an all-in timing attack, whereas the Terran, you just need to be ready to lift your third, pull back your SCVs. And if you do that, they actually can't trade with you. Um, because if they run up your natural ramp, they get they get blitzed. And it, once you get like six tanks together with Bio and 2-2, the Zerg just can't take efficient fights. Um, it's just about growing your army big enough. But when you're fighting small trades against Roach Ravager, Roach Ravager does just fine. And at this point, Cyril just wants to throw these units away. The fact he's getting kills for it. He is more than happy. He's like, holy shit, I'm actually killing stuff. I honestly just want to free up supply so I can build Hydra Ling Bane Lurker. Um, that's that's the better composition right now. I don't want these clunky roaches and ravages that chew up supply. Big tank spready. That's a big spready of tanks. The Viper's a bit far behind. Disjointed attack here from Serral. Does he have the numbers? Gets a parasitic bomb on top of the Vikings. And he gets one yoink before the second Viper goes down. He's just got too much. Maru overwhelmed in game one. Just taking that front third and not reacting to his scouting information at all. Serral gets an easy map one victory. A great start to the series for the Finn. In the bottom left, it's Serral. Uh, not going to be playing that style again. Might play Mutaling Bane. And uh, this is a map where Maru has favored three command center in the past. We'll see if he goes for it again. And he actually brought out the Raven on this map versus Raynor, didn't he? So Raven, a good choice, but it's such a big map, man. And I, I don't know, I feel like Serral's probably going to play Lurker Ling Bane. Ling Bane Hydra, add Lurkers in the Hive. Maybe pure Ling Bane Hydra since it served him so well. I, I don't know. I, I mentioned Muters a few times, but I'm, I'm thinking about how Serral's been playing recently, and I'm like, nah, he'll play Hydras, I think. We'll see what happens. We were just doing some maths in, 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 in the break between games on the Lurker shots on the live stream guys and uh people have pointed out that uh if you have plus three armor on lurkers they have four armor in total and they've, they've claimed that they survive three shots from the siege tank so if you've got no vehicle upgrades on a siege tank and they have plus three carapace it'll take four shots but otherwise that's a pretty that's almost never gonna happen if you're building if you're building tanks you'll have a plus one so basically tanks are in all realistic scenarios tanks always three shot lurkers no matter what but uh it's, it's it's always interesting to look at those numbers and see how they kind of stack up of course it's still worth getting um tank upgrades anyway no matter what simply because they do splash damage which kind of goes down in, in decreasing rings most splash damage in starcraft will have a close ring that does maximum damage another ring that does so it's usually like main damage on the target let's say you hit this scv and then just around it 50 percent and just beyond that 25 percent, something like that and obviously you can only take damage from one ring so if you're in the middle you just take the full from the direct or the 50 percent and then if you're on just barely getting clipped by it you take the 25 percent it's usually something like that i don't know the exact numbers for each unit but i know that's how it works with like archon splash as well obviously storm flat damage fungal flat damage those sort of aoe abilities the disruptor i think the widow mine might have flat splash damage as well because i'm pretty sure that's uniform but tanks and archons and that sort of stuff it's got a, a bit of a decreasing radius i'm not sure if ultralisks have that or not either zergling surprise from serral and maru caught without going for the scv scout 
Ooh, this is a big problem for him, man. He's going to take a whole lot of lost mining time, not to mention this. And this is already a win for Serral. He's going to get that SCV potentially. Oh, he's going for the Marine now. Oh, oh, good micro by, by Maru. If he could get this SCV, that would be cool, but he's not going to. He's just getting some damage on it. But that's still great damage. Six Zerglings, and guess what? His, his Marine, or Reaper, sorry, hasn't been able to deny your creep. You can now just send a drone out, take the third base for free. Uh, you've been droning behind it. You didn't need to build any defensive Zerglings, right? Because all your Zerglings got to be offensive. If you think about it, a lot of the time Zerg build four or six Zerglings just to defend the Reaper. In this case, you actually got to kill some stuff. Uh, I think it was two SCVs. It was only one, but I think the mining time makes it more than worth it. So a nice 16 pool opening for Serral. Get a bit of momentum here in game two. And I feel like Serral's planning and series has really stepped up a notch in the last couple of years. Gets himself these advantages a lot. Maru is going for three command center into second barracks, but that build order will be a bit messed up with all the mining time, so it's not going to be hitting a super crisp, like, five minutes 45 or 550 double barracks marine stem timing, and especially since he's building more Hellions. I would expect Maru to not be hitting with double medevac probably until about 620 in this game. We'll see what happens. It's a big map, but uh, we'll see exactly how he transitions forwards from that. Reaper Hellion. Just going to come around, look for some creep tumors. Oh, Serral. He didn't have an Overlord over here. So he's got an Overlord over here earlier than he really needs it. Just a little odd. Does clean up the Reaper at least, but loses two creep tumors there. So very good snipes, I think, for a Reaper. Not too bad. Overlord flies through the main, sees literally everything, and gets out the back of the base. Marines? I don't... Oh, they'll get it just barely. It's going to die just barely. Oh, 12 hit points. He was three hits, two hits from death. Ooh. What can I say, guys? I got the cast a curse today. I am calling everything wrong. But uh, yeah, that's really good for Serral, man. Serral's happy. 46 drones versus 35 SCVs. He's scouting around the map. Still lacks an overlord over on this right side, but as his creep spreads out, he should be all right with that. Sees the Hellions are up on the left side of the map. Double Engineering Bay goes down, and we are going to see the Starport swap over momentarily. Just trying to make your opponent uncomfortable. This is the goal with these Hellions. Look for Creep Tumors. Make it so your opponent has to put some attention towards them. Pick off some snipes where you can. And that Bailey Nest does go down, as well as the Quick Lair. So no fast upgrades for Serral. Serral could turn this into a Muta build. He's already got four gases. I would definitely say this, to me, this looks like a Mutalisk build with how fast those gases went down. And he's moving out to take a fourth base up here now. You can see this drone just working its way over there. Pros sends that ahead of time. Has 300 minerals the second it gets there. Five minute 30, fourth base. And comes back through with this Overlord. We'll see that there's gonna be tanks being produced. So several getting some very useful scouting. Those Marines do set, take, some, they take some drugs. They take that Overlord down. This Overlord is going to get spotted. Hides on the pillar, but the Medivac's going to spot it. Double Evo Chamber goes down. No Spire just yet. Interesting. No, no gases either. So he is just going to play Hydraling Bane or, or Lurkerling Bane, something like that, most likely, as this Marine squad moves down the right side of the map. I said about 620 he would probably hit. Well, he's actually gone with just 12 Marines. So he's still hitting... 6-10, not a great timing, but, you know, he hunted an Overlord on the way across the map. Not too bad. Barely stopped that Creep Tumor from spreading, but he doesn't get that Creep Tumor. So that's a problem for him. And look at that. Transfuse saves the Overlord for Serral, and he keeps the Creep Tumor at the front. If he got that one, he could have stopped that Tumor from spreading. Because it kind of, this the Tumor that spreads, like this one is the active Tumor. You can see it's got these blue bubbles on it. It needs to kind of channel the other Creep Tumor. So if you kill this any time before that finishes... They'll both die. So just a good little good little tip. Obviously, killing that doesn't kill that, but killing this does kill that. Just a cute little way of thinking of it. And uh, because he doesn't get that, the creep spread's very good for Serral here. Fourth and fifth barracks coming down at the front. Second factory in the main. Armory on the way as well. Very nicely timed out here for Maru. Maru always thinking about the late game as a spire does come down for Serral, but super late. So compared to when he could have had it, so Serral's... Basically saying, I will play a Mutaling Bane macro game, but it's more of, let's have a solid economy. Let's defend with Ling Bane. The Mutas are coming in as more of an afterthought in this particular game. His, his worker count sucks, um, does Serral's, but he's got a lot of army. That's, that's kind of what he's done here. He said, look, I'll just dominate the map. You can't really fight me. I got plenty of units to defend. 
and I'll just spread creep like crazy using that map dominance. But the downside is it's a giant map. Maru's got a fourth command center halfway done, and he's got more workers than you. So this is, I would say, a, a little bit slow on the drones for Serral. Now, if he cleans up all these marines and medevacs with the muters, awesome, well worth it. Then he can drone 20 drones onto that fourth base, secure a fifth base, and he's roaring. He's got that Zerg econ right now, though. We're seeing a Maru that is simply ahead on the macro. He's going three more barracks, up to eight barracks. Yeah, he's not making big inroads on the creep, but at least he's keeping Serral busy. He's just chipping away. He's killed a queen or two here or there. You can see that. Muta's now going to hunt him down. And oh, Maru with the jukes. He does juke that one away. Very cute. Very, very cute. And he's going to kill a Muta or two. Is he? Not transfused too good. And that queen will finish that. Medivac off. Muta's will as well. And can, he get, can he get a Muta? No. Nice try by Maru though. Got the other Medivacs home during that. Kept his opponent busy. His 2-2. 50 seconds underway. Serral has not started his 2-2. He's up to 14. About to be 15 muters. Plus one upgrades are on the way. But he's got to start the upgrades. Plus two carapace does kick in. He's taking an extra gas. So he's going to go up to seven gases right now. He's got a fifth base on the way as well. 80 drones. He's got a good economy. But Serral playing so heavy on the units... I, if I were in Serral's shoes, I'd feel a bit of urgency about denying this fourth base. I'd be like, man, let's roll some Bling Bane in here and then come in here and try to bust the planetary. Now, we can see Maru's ready for that. He's pretty well set up. He could actually probably hold on against that sort of move. And Serral's going to go in, gets a Widow Mine, loses a Muta for it, but that's fine. And gets another one. He's going to go for the big trade. Watch out for the Widow Mine! Right in the center of the Zerglings. Oh, that Widow Mine slaughtered. Now, yeah, it friendly fired a few Marines. Much better, though, I think, for Maru than it was for Serral. Serral just went for the big balls attack, where he's like, hey, I'll, I'll just go in, I'll take a hit, but I'll kill all your shit as well. Didn't quite work out for him. Infestation Pit's on the way. He's still only at 79 drones. This is not a style where you can afford to be super wasteful. That last attack sucked balls for Serral. And notice that Maru is showing... A little bit of restraint in this game, guys. He knows these players are trying to just overwhelm him. He's not investing in the Iron Bank. He's saying upgrades, unit production, upgrades, unit production, turrets, turrets, upgrades, unit production. Maru is realizing that his opponent's going to try and swamp him. And so because of that, he's focusing on knuckling down the defense, only slowly adding the command center. So he's putting the command centers down as the lowest priority. Whereas normally Maru, when he's in a defensive stance and turtled up, he tries to go mass command center. But he's realized that there's a bit too much of a, a gap in his units normally when he does that, where he skips some marines, skips some marauders, skips some mines. So in this case, he's kind of maxing out and then adding lots of turrets and only then going for the command centers. And he's saying, look, I know I know Serral. He's on Mutaling Bane. He's going to have to try and find a trade with me. If I don't give him any good trades, then, then that's how I'm going to get ahead. Rather than having mass orbital command center, I'm going to take awesome fights. And already baiting Serral into some pretty nasty fights there. The muters do pick off a few things in the bottom right, but nothing too crazy. Hive, though. About to finish. Serral will not, not get caught. Just stuck in the mid-game. But his work account? 90 drones now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down with that work account. Serral now has a real big boy economy, but he does not have the bank. Remember, Maru has been a little ahead of him in that regard in terms of getting up the macro. Now 3-3 three is on the way for the Terran. Not enough gas to start it for the Zerg. As he goes Adrenal Glands, Ultra Cavern. He'll have to come back and start the 3-3 three, three in a little while. Marine Drop thinking of reinforcing these turrets in the main. And Ling Bane coming forward. Burrowed Zerglings on all of the bases. Real nice. He's got a Burrowed Zergling there. Zergling there. Zergling Burrowed in the middle of the map as well. Awesome play by Serral who's roaming the map with his Mutaling Bane. He wants to push Maru home. Now, does Maru thrust the left side of the map? It looks like he's just going to pull over to the right and try to play more defensive. He's clearing a little bit of creep, but he's basically vying for map control. There are Burrowed Banelings out on this map. And he's got to watch out. This is a big army of Zerg, and he's just finding little pieces of the Terran, but I think that might have been a manual detonation and an accidental one at that from Serral. Uh, because that was a bit of a weird detonate on those Banelings. Banelings on the right side. He's looking for a run by. He's not going to find anything. Get spotted, has to pull back. And the Ling's getting a nice surround there, guys. They're going to go for it. Bailing's coming on in. He's going to hit those Marines and Marauders. Maru is being so cautious. Any other Terran I'd feel so bad for in this scenario because they're so surrounded. 
and he's barely now getting a fifth base up up against a sixth space Zerg. But you know what? It's Maru. I don't think it matters, man. I don't think it matters. As long as he survives, Maru is shown he is the god of late game. Serral, is he a player who can deal with it? Well, this composition, Ultraling Bane, this is going to be a I'm playing early late game. I'm looking to overwhelm you with Ultraling Bane and just, just momentum and striking while the iron is hot. These Widow Mines spread everywhere. Does get a medevac. Doesn't quite finish the Thor. He gets another medevac there. There's a giant spread across the map. I don't know how you fight this as several guys. He needs Ultras out. He needs them out yesterday. Kite is played and done in 20 seconds. 3-3 three, three on the way. He does not have the Anabolic Synthesis upgrade on the way. Now, what is that? That's the Ultra List movement speed. He hasn't queued it up. He does need to remember that. That makes them have 10% faster movement speed off creep. Doesn't change them defensively on creep. Helps them attack off creep though. Muters find the Widow Mine Rally. Delicious trades there for Serral. Three Widow Mines for free. Very important. Mass Ling Bane looking to defend this base. But I think in this case, the better part of Valor is waiting for the Ultras. Once he has three or four Ultras out, they'll cleave the Marauder and the Thor front line down. The Ling Bane can be more effective. But he needs more Ultras and more Zerglings right now. His Muters are doing really well at intercepting Maru's rally. He's taken out a lot of these Widow Mines. Units moving up north. They're going to try and handle him. Pushing him back on that side. Ling Ultra coming forward. He wants to fudge this army up. But his 3-3 is not done yet. Is this a bit of an anti-timing for Serral? He's got the Ultras with Kindness Blading. Will it be enough? He's down double upgrades. The Widow Mines get a few shots off. But a nice evacuate with the Thor. And Maru says, get out of here. Evacuate the left. Attack the right. He's going to get rid of two of Serral's hatcheries. This one, he already took out the middle one. Serral's income's taking a dive. Okay. Ultras do pop on top of this. I don't think there's much escape here, but those muters are a little clumped up. He does take out some of these medevacs, and that means the Thors should not be able to escape. Yeah, they won't be able to get out of there. This is going to be a one-way trip for this army, as those muters do take it down. Thor takes out another muter or two before it goes. Unit's lost tab looks totally fine for Serral. Uh, losing these two hatcheries, like I said, loses him a bit of income momentum, but he's still got eh, half a base, full base, and that base could get some workers transferred at the moment. A lot of drones long distance mining, so his income will dip a bit. Maru's got a fifth up, but how does Maru defend the far left and the far right at the same time? Serral, the Chad goes up the guts! A crazy maneuver. He's going to try and take out these liberators, and I think he's got to pull back now. Yeah. Thought he might have caught Maru too, too spread on the flanks, but doesn't really get it. And ooh, snipes come down. The ghost counts out. Seven ghosts and six ghosts building at a time. Personal cloaking for those ghosts being upgraded right now. This is a, a very nice position for Maru. Why? Because he's got how many orbitals? Four. Soon to be five. Six. Seven. He's getting the iron bank up slowly and steadily. He's learnt a lot of respect for Serral after that Curious Minds map where Serral swarmed him in the group stage. He said, okay, I just need to always have an abundance of units and I need to be very careful to not give you that opening. Ultralisk movement speed coming in. Flyer armor for those muters, plus one range. He's still building more muters. I cannot agree with that. I categorically cannot agree with you if you believe that building mutalists at the 16 minute mark is a good investment. I do believe they are a defunct unit at this point in the game. And you're going to need to show us some fucking magic, Serral. Now, Serral already shows us some magic and gets three Widow Mines for, for, for free. He says, Pig, what was that? You said they're not a good unit at this stage. You're an idiot. I am one of the best Zergs in the world. I will find awesome value. These muters give me great flexibility. I would argue, though, that 20 muters is 40 supply of units that aren't Lingbane Ultra smashing into both sides of the map at the same time. And I think that's where his victory condition is, is sniping off those expansions. Great spready, great missile turrets guarding the Liberators. Muters can't go in on that. I think as Serral, you've got Maru committing to the center of the map. Maru's going to try to keep pressuring here and baiting you into this area. And your job as Serral is to get a big army and just smash the right. Big army, smash the left, give up your middle base. Maru will not be able to push too deep from here. He might be able to get this base, but going any further than that's going to be very dangerous. Mass missile turret. Now they don't have the upgrades just yet, but they are on the way. Both building armor and the extra range upgrades. These muters fly in and they go, shit, man, he's kind of prepared for this. Yeah, Maru gave massive respect to the muter run buys at this point. It's actually massive, massive respect. Now, honestly, Maru is just creating spreadies. 
That's his whole job. You might be wondering, what's a spready? Well, in gymnastics, that might be like doing the splits or some shit. In StarCraft, that's spreading your shit out when everything naturally wants to clump up. That Link Bane attack on the right I was talking about, just blow up the planetary, cancel the command center. Yeah, good move. I think this is well worth. He's going to try to get some ghosties or some SCVs as well. Not really going to get too much there. Remember, guys, it takes five Banelings to kill a ghost. Even more than that, maybe. Um, we don't have any Banelings on the map right now, so I can't click on it. I actually don't know how much damage a plus three Baneling does. I think it might only be 20 these days. Um, well, I'll, I'll hover over that in a moment when these Banelings finish morphing, because they did get nerfed a few times. And remember, ghosts are not light units. A lot of people think they are. They are not light units. They do not take those bonus to light damage. There's going to be a big fight. Marauder's trying to snipe off this base. He's trying to bait him in. It's 22 damage a shot up against the ghosts with three armor. That indeed means it is six Banelings to kill a single ghost. Now, obviously, if they're clumped up, that can still be effective for the Banelings. But otherwise, it's not particularly good. He does take out a Marauder, but he's got it spread because the ghosts, the muters, if they go in range of the ghosts, they die. Pop, pop. One mutalist does go down. This base gets taken out. And look at that, guys. He got a new planetary up on the right side. I think Serral cannot be fighting into this. Not with his army composition. Not like this. If he gets Broodlord Infester, he can do it. But until then, he needs to be hitting this base with massive Banelings. This base with massive Banelings. It's hard because there's Liberators that are going to tax him for it. But he's allowing Maru to coalesce in the center. And if you let Ma Maru's just bloody flood of Terran all get together in a big spready with turrets and libs and mines and ghosts, you're going to have a friggin' bad fight. It's gonna, it's gonna be bad. At the moment, it's little drippy drops all over the map. And that's what you've got to do as the Zerg. With a Ling Bane style, it's not efficient in a big fight. It's efficient in small fights all over the map using its mobility. But if the Terran can watch the fights, can, can micro them correctly, you're gonna have a hard time. But if he gets a planetary, he could kill at least one of these command centers. And there we go. Eight Banelings for one Ghost and one Marine. Not the best trade. He's gonna deny the base on the left side, though. Should be able to get the command center. Mm, only 13 muters. Maybe, maybe no. More command centers floating over. And this is where he's got to run back in with this Ling Bane again. He's got to keep doing that over and over. Killing those command centers is huge. If he can keep killing them, you just pull back. He lets the command center escape. Banelings versus Marauder Thor Ghost equals the worst trade of all time. Ghosts want the snipes. Get out of there, Serral. Serral, get out of there. Oh, shit. He does run in on the right side. Takes a Widow Mine hit. The Liberator's going to move over and try to protect this. But he can still kill these SCVs very well. He can absolutely deny some of these building command centers, but he's not microing it right now. Oh, if you could get on those building command centers, that would be huge. And look at that. He's going to kill the Widow Mines. Oh, very nice. He's going to get those Widow Mines. That's a good trade. But Maru pushing on the left. Infestors are here. Those ghosts, though. Those ghosts, man. He's got to give up these bases. Serral cannot fight in these scenarios. Serral, he's got to be like water. I keep talking about Maru coalescing. Well, right now, Serral needs to funnel the shit out of this left side of the map. He needs to literally pull the plug on these Zerg bases, get all the drones transferred to the right side of the map. And when Maru pushes there, he needs to transfer him right back over here. He needs to avoid front-on fights right now to Serral. And he's doing a pretty good job of it. But he's now got to hit this base as Maru moves to the left and this base. If he can hit those two bases in a moment, that'll be big. Problem for him. Widow Mines spread all over the map, scouting what he's up to. Scans, seeing everything he's doing right now as well. Maru has got five orbitals, three planetaries. He's trying to get more command centers up. He is not at the Iron Bank yet, but he's max and he's got a bigger bank than Serral. And that's not something you want. Maru's late game efficiency. Bio, mine, lib, ghost, Thor. Spreading across multiple screens. The most giant of spreads. How do you flank an army that covers half the map? It riddle me this. Come on, comment section, Twitch. How do you flank this army? I always talk about you got to flank a Terran army. You can't flank an army that covers half the map. And that's the secret of Maru's control. He just keeps his army spread so bloody far. Nothing's clumped up. Nothing's there for the Banelings. And then he micros it back individually in sections. That's a good catch for Serral. He does cut part of the army off. But most of it survives. He catches the pervert infester there. And that one does go down. One sneaky little pervert infester burrowing in from beneath you. It, it does its dirty fungals. That's his game plan. A lot of the time in the late game, Serral's the best sneaky infester pervert. He likes to pop up behind and drop the fungal. Flanky ghost take him out. But it feels like he's taking so many economic hits. It's going to be hard for Serral to deal with this. Oof. A couple of good Widow Mine hits there. Now he should be able to clean that one up. He will be able to. And he can pull his army back. These sensor towers, plus the scans, giving great vision. Now, the muters have gone in the main. And there's not that many of them left. But they're getting awesome damage on the economy. Maru, though, still up at 63 SCVs. Does he care? 
Maybe, maybe not. This command center is building everywhere right now. Maru is just trying to reinforce his trenches. He, he realized if he can just get defenses everywhere, planetaries, turrets, libs, anything like this, allows him to make these areas of the map just a pain for Serral to move into. And yet again, the Marauder drop on the left side. He's done it so many times. Serral's like, get the fudge out of here, man. That's so annoying. Those missile turrets with high sec auto tracking, they have eight range and two armor. They're so bloody effective. And look at that, he clears the ground army, but he can't clear the libs up. His, his anti-air is on the wrong side of the map, and it's about to step through a field filled with rakes. Ow! Steps on one, smacks him in the face. He says, ah! But he does ignore that field, doesn't decide to clear it up for now. He's too busy getting over here to try and defend the left side. But Maru's got him where he wants him. Maru's baiting him into a front-on fight. We know this is a disaster for Serral. Serral, he thinks he can take this out, but I don't know if he can. The Infestor's coming in, not going to be able to get the Infestor. The Muta's actually... Take out the libs really efficiently, but my god, I thought he had enough banelings to chase the ghosts all the way home. He makes them cloak and spread. He kills like a ghost for 37 banelings. One infester looking for the big unbaro. He gets it. He gets a big old fungal. Is it enough? No, it's not. There's a ghost. So many still getting out of there. He's going to kill a few more of these liberators. Man, I don't know, actually. He does kill a lot of Maru's stuff, but dude, so many ghosts surviving in the red. And the medevacs are going to be able to heal those up. This is still so close. This is still so goddamn close. Maru taking a base on the left right now. He's trying to take this high ground. He knows if he can cement this position, he wins the game. He's launching a nuke. And that baits Serral in and he snipes some of the muters. Now that is going to go down. The nuke gets cancelled. The lings are going to get on top. I think Maru might have overextended. Maybe a lot of the ghosts are going down. Serral is low on cash right now. He does not have a lot of... Uh, he doesn't have a lot of money available. He's got a handful of muters and corruptors, but he's chased a bit too far. Gets rid of the planetary, though. Should be able to kill that command center. Very nice moves by Serral. And he's got to keep the movement going. There's a command center sitting out here like a, a bloody sore thumb. Uh, command center there. He's trying to build SCVs right now. Eight SCVs building at a time is Maru. Maru realizing his economy is not as robust as he would like. And this is still a nasty position for both sides. Serral keeping that unit's lost tab. Uh, surprisingly close here for an Ultra Ling Bane Muta style. I love that he's added the Corruptors at this point, but it also means he's got a crazy number of units in the air. And at this point, I think Maru, you stop building Liberators for a little bit um, because they're, they're not that useful. You've already forced it. A lot of kind of shit units uh, in the Corruptor Muta out of your opponent. Just keep these few Liberators. Bait him in. Use your Snipes. Once you kill the Muta Corruptor, then start rebuilding Libs. Serral's going to come on in here. On the left side, one big swarm, but I don't know about attack attacking this angle. He gets rid of the Libs pretty well, but there's even a tank in a corner. The Libs are sieged on the base. Does he have enough Ling Bane Ultra? The Ghosts are sniping the Ultras while Lings are on top of them. I cannot believe some of those Snipes got off there. The tank in the corner. Sergeant Chadhammer himself. 27 kills and does go down. Now, Lings can go in there. I'd like to see Banelings actually blow those up as well. Serral realizes he's got to keep his units together to chase the ghost. I can't believe he's letting Maru mine that. Of course, he, he realizes the frontal fight might decide the game. Queen's pushing back Widow Mines on the right side. One little Burrow Boy says, eat a dick, Terran player, and have fun long distance mining with those mules. But Serral, if he can deny this base and deny this base, he can still win this game because there's almost no minerals left. Four mineral patches there, four mineral patches there. If you can deny these bases, you're good. Widow Mine drop, though, kills 12 workers. He's got a Widow Mine there denying this bottom right base that Serral so desperately needs. Serral is out of cash. He's low on workers. Lings will deny this. But even just one round of mules there just bought enough to buy another 30 marines. He's got seven orbitals, and this is where the Iron Bank wins. If the Zerg gets in a medium economy situation and the Terran still has the Iron Bank and can secure a base, the Terran says, hey buddy, do you like my income? It's just getting started. Watch that number go up, Serral. I know you can't see it, but you can guess. Because you know I have an orbital. I got the Iron Bank, dickhead. That I only need to hold on to one base to mine 4,000 minerals a minute. That's right. That's 80 marines a minute that I'm harvesting. 80 marines. Serral's there like, I can build 30 Zerglings a minute. <sighs> He's got to bust this base. If he breaks it, he can still win. But Serral is down on army supply. If he can get the ghost, I think he got a nice fungal with the flank there. But God, the ghost stutter step. His ghosts just never die. Maru's ghosts just never die. Every single one, it's like he, he literally, when he took them to Maru's ghost school, he showed them every Sean Bean death scene in every movie ever. And he said, don't do this. And the ghosts were like, oh, okay. Now, apparently after watching it, uh, enough of those, 
They, they did actually take on one mannerism of a Sean Bean death scene, which is a, an overly dramatic groan. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Most of the time, they're not dying. They're wriggling away from the Ling Bane surround, and they're just not fucking dying. They get damaged, they don't die. Obviously, yeah, 22 ghosts have died, Pig. What are you talking about? He's lost 8 Ultras, 46 Muters, 170 Banes, and 823 Zerglings. Put it in perspective, guys. I'd trade 22 ghosts for that any day. Any day. And now Maru's got a base there. He's got this. They're both fresh bases. Yes, this is the worst base on the map for those who don't know. One gas and six minerals. They were like, hey, we were thinking of putting a base in one of the most exposed positions in the corner of the map. We're also only going to give you less minerals and gas than normal. So this is the base that you take and you're like, ah, I don't really want it, but I guess I'll take it. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It does have mining. It's acceptable. But Serral, his, his position is not acceptable. He's going to Broodlord Infester. There's going to be people watching this game. You say, see, Broodlord Infester is not good. It gets counted by ghosts. Yeah, when your opponent's up 50 army supply, I think that might be the case. Fucking great fungals, though. Oh, and he's dodged a lot of the uh, EMPs as well. Another one comes in. And this, honestly, was the worst fight of all time by Maru in terms of taking giant fungals and getting hit by everything. But it didn't matter. He had the numbers, and he knew that if he pushed on top, he could kill most of what Serral has and trade with him at a point when, guess what? Serral can't really defend his economy. Oh, oh my god, actually, Serral does kill that base. This is like the sickest fight of all time for Serral. But it's just, he's just so outnumbered. I don't think it matters. He's so outnumbered. That was amazing fungals. And, and we got to see kind of the idea. He's going to drop Widow Mines on the Broodlord. Uh, Maru there styling on Serral's last few Broodlords. And Serral, he got, he got a few bases up in the top left. Too little, too late. Even though he denied one of the bases, remember that Maru has the Iron Bank. And he, it's not, I can dance all day. It's, I can mule all day. I can mule all day. You can deny some mining. I can mule all day, mother trucker. I got the Iron Bank. My name is Maru. My late game is sick. And Serral... He's realized he needed to break Maru earlier, or he needed to protect a solid 75 drone economy. And the moment he got nut down into the 50s, the moment he lost a few mining bases and had idle drones for a minute or two here or there, Maru, as long as he had one mining base with mules blanketing it, he was able to overtake and overwhelm. And that's, that's kind of the balancing factor here, where the Zerg has an easier to use mobile army, one could argue. On the other hand, they need to protect a much larger portion of the map than the Terran does. And that there is the beautiful asymmetric balance of StarCraft 2. Maru striking back and ties up the series one to one. Oh, right, all right, all right. Let's go, guys. Game number three. Serral in the bottom right there. Unable to compete with the late game of the Maru. Played a very safe progression to late game. I admire it. I respect it. And uh, fantastic. Oh, oh. That was a bit of a mistake, as Depot's a second late there. <laughs> He'd rallied it to the natural for some reason, rather than just rallying it to the spot. I think I think he wanted it to not decelerate. He also hasn't doubled up on his close patch. There we go, he fixes that up. Maru! I was like, focus, buddy. You are you tied up the series. It's, you don't even have a lead yet. No time to make mistakes there. Barracks should be going for that gas in a moment. Okay, nice build order. And a very standard 16 hatch right on 47 seconds going on 48 for Serral. So very nice play overall, guys. Very nice play between these two. And we've got to talk a little bit about that last game, right? So is Terran overpowered in late game, people were saying? Um, do you guys know how hard it is to keep your army spread across multiple screens the way Maru was? I don't even know how he does it. Like, does he, does he just not keep anything control grouped? Like, what does he do? I mean, I guess I can bring up control groups over here on the right for both players whenever i've got one of their units clicked you can see it but um it feels like he was he's just got to kind of scroll around and box his units and he's like i got some shit here some shit here some shit here and none of it's on control groups and he's just kind of scrolling around manually kind of saying oh borrow that widow mine spread out the liberator use the ghosts you know like it's it's not something where there's an easy shortcut because remember why does it look so different if Average Joe or even any other Terran that's not the best Terran in the world tries to do what Maru did in that, li that last game? Well, the main problem you have is at some point you F2, you select all army or you grab the half of the army that's on a control group, you click it somewhere and it's in this big fat blob of ghosts and mines and libs and the Zerg jumps on it and you're like, ah, and your units get blown up by Banelings. Um, and it's just hard to organize. So the way Maru 
and, and the best Terrans do this really well, just fought for map dominance and control. It's awesome to watch because it's so... I mean, it, it looks easy if you've never played StarCraft because he makes it look kind of easy. It's so hard to not just do it. And, and the simpler format we see from like an innovation style Terran, you know, in the last year, um, who started really the, the, the this big late game Terran popularity, is he'd just push both sides of the map with these like half of his army. But Maru doesn't keep it that simple. He's much more fluid. Yeah, he'll push the right, push the, you know, push the left. But he'll also consolidate his whole army in the middle when needed. He'll he'll bring it together and support each other. And then he'll back away at other times. So nice to get another drone snipe there. Definitely Serral not too happy with that. Of course, both players having to play here uh, cross server a little bit. So neither player really having an advantage. Both players having a less than ideal environment. But that is the way it goes. Bit of lag for both sides. Now this is a very quick starport. He's building more marines, guys. Which makes me think about maybe a 420 held that timing. 420 light him up. <clears throat> that reaper just jumped from there to there. Reaper physics, man. What the hell? Just jumped over a bloody barrel, doodad. Ooh, Cyril's doing get map one again, guys. Map one. Now on this map... <clears throat> Can we shit on Maru if he takes this third? There's actually a really nice tank spot there and there. Um, I think this third's still better. <laughs> that's that's my thought, but uh, you can kind of just control this area and just don't build the depots at the third, and I'm okay with the front third. As long as he doesn't build depots out here, maybe some depots there because he wants to hold the tank position up here against that Roach Flood. Oh shit, guys, seven roaches. Eight roaches already on the way, and it is a 420 light em up. It's a 420 light em up, guys. So this attack's meant to hit at 4 minutes 20 with six hellbats, four marines, and a medevac. I think he's going to be a few seconds late on it, so not the crispest timing. Though you could argue, because he hasn't missed a single bit of SCV production, this is more of an economic variation, but no. Here we go, guys. Armory's going to finish. He's going to morph these hellbats. The first four are here. The next one's coming in behind it. He's unloading on top. But roaches! Are the counter to this, and this is fantastic for Serral. Maru needs to leave. Look at that. He picks up in broom, broom, burn, burn form, and he's got to run home. He's got to try and get these Marines home. Of course, Roaches, 3.15 movement speed. Marines, 3.15 movement speed. The Doggo! The Doggo's getting caught! Duh. Okay, he's going to lose some Marines, which is a bit of a bummer. He's going to try and hold the ramp. Hellbat's very good at beating Roaches if they can get the Roaches to attack into them, but... Uh oh Maru, what are we doing, buddy? Let's click on his medevac. He's trying to fight out here. I mean, this seems like a great fight for Serral. Good pickups to save some of these units, but it's going to be a while till the Banshee's out. And as Serral, do you just stop and kill the depots? I think you do. Because he knows he can't get up the ramp, and he knows the SCVs have been pulled. So he says, look, if I run up the ramp, the Hellbats are going to roast me in that cramped space on the ramp. So just kill whatever I can get my hands on. Banshee's here. Does he run home? There's two SCVs that are in the open. Those SCVs are free kills right now. You can kill, yeah, you can kill that one as well. Obviously, losing all your roaches kind of sucks, but okay, he's gonna he's gonna try and breach the ramp here. There's two more SCVs. There's two more down there. I think this is pretty good damage for Serral, who's up to 62 workers behind this, and he's actually swapping off roaches. He's making link speed, guys. So he's not playing mass roach. I thought he was gonna play mass roach, but look at all that delay. Third CC is almost finished for Maru, but. And at this point, you know the Roach is going to die on the way home. Why not just grab another Marine? Maybe even go back in and get one more SCV. Maru loses another SCV. And, oh, that Marine barely gets out. Three bases filled with workers. Spire building on the front of the base. Spore Crawler there as well. And he's going into Zerglings. Baneling Nest just going down. No Evo Chamber just yet. By golly, he's way ahead though. Serral going for an eight roach pressure with no zergling speed this game and it was the best possible build to be doing against maru's opening and this is just a, a very bad matchup of build orders and maru i think a little too slow to retreat in this game he obviously morphed his hellbat so deep in zerg territory that it's a bit of a disaster and uh actually i think there was a rogue versus maru game i can't remember what tournament it was but i think that one happened where it was a similar matchup Actually, maybe it was Serral Maru in the group stage. I can't remember. It was the same matchup, same build order, and same... Um, it's just the Roaches were a little late, and the Hellbats ended up doing really good damage because the Roaches were only popping out as the drones were dying. But in this case, the Roaches were about 20 seconds, 30 seconds faster. Changed everything. 
got queens there as well. One one upgrades on the way. Ten muters building. It's a twelve. My God, that's a lot of muters. And that means he can easy clean up these banshees for free if he chooses to. Serral, his changeling there, if you see that red dot and are wondering what that is. Armory, of course, is already done, so he doesn't need to add that. And he's going to go for a Hellbat Marine drop. Which is going to... If that flies into the muters, he just loses the game. Oh, and Serral sees it coming. Yeah, Serral can just gather his muters and lings, kill this drop, and that's GG. Or he can just counterattack. Either one works. Muters are on top of the Banshees. One's out of energy, the other's very low. And he's morphing Banelings. He's looking for an attack right now. And Serral finds the Marines in the open. They try to run away. The Muters go in for that. And they're going to pull on in. The natural SCV is getting ransacked right now. Surprised he didn't attack those at all. Ling's in the main as well. Ling's in the natural. Ling's in the main. No combat shields done right now. Ling's in the natural going down. Ling's and Muters in the main doing some good damage. Serral just absolutely ransacking Maru's base, and I mean, I thought it would be even more damage, but it's not done yet. Ling's at the front, gonna take down that siege tank. These SCVs are toast. Banelings rolling in behind this. Baneling speed will be finished soon. 1-1 one, one upgrades have started. Serral is still up a full base of workers, and Baneling speed is like 10 seconds away. He's like, ah, give me a moment, please. Come on, just hold on, just a moment, please. Uh, of course, these are Heart of the Swarm seconds counting down on the right side of your screen, which is why they go so bloody quickly. Builds the hype, I say. And as Baneling Speed kicks in, I think we go in for one more round. And we go for the finish. Serral looking for that 2-1 advantage. He says, get out of this game, Maru. Your cheeky Elbat timings just went to Dick Town. Um, just enough. Yeah, just enough to overwhelm. I mean, he was already in a disastrous, posi disastrous position was Maru. And now even worse, the Muta's able to fight the Marines even under the Medivac healing. Maru's got to tap out. That is a devastating, crushing, easy defeat there for Serral. Great choice of building. Well, people are talking about how if, if, if Maru could take down Serral here, it would just cement him potentially as the greatest of all time. Definitely, I mean, he's already best form in the world right now, Maru. And if he gets this on top of it, it would be so huge. But Serral... Is up two to one. He's picking his builds fantastically. He's playing great StarCraft and he's creating very big problems for Maru, who now goes into Pride of Altaris. Now I'm gonna go I'm gonna go out on a limb, guys, and say there's a few things Maru thinks when he queues into this map. And that is giant piece of shit. Um, Maru does not like playing on this game, man. On this map. He, he this map is huge. It's hard to finish the Zerg off. It's gigantic. It's it's awkward to get across. It's easier for the Zerg to defend their gold base than it is for you to defend yours. Though, honestly, I don't expect either player to be taking that until base number six. Maybe base number five. Very much doubt it'll be taken before then. And it's just hard to finish off a guy like Serral, who's is very good. Now, on the other hand, Maru also might be thinking, me late game god, me very good at turtling with ghosts. Maybe I'll go straight there. So... I don't, I mean, I say straight there. He's playing three racks. This is reactor first build order. Maru's playing three racks, guys. <sighs> On this map. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm curious to see how Serral handles this because a lot of players have struggled against his three racks, right? Raynor um, looked okay against it early on, but just the transition afterwards is, is kind of awkward to deal with. And I'm pretty sure with, it, with how much he's pulled off gas. Yeah. Just gets the reactor, builds a second barracks, third one will go down there momentarily after that command center. Three racks, very popular in this matchup. Recently, Maru's been mixing it in a lot. And we've talked about how we, the real trick with this build is he wants to hit a big stim, stim combat shield marine timing about five minutes. And he wants to just force Serral to either, oh, Serral's unprepared. I run in and I just win the game, do crazy damage. Or much more realistic scenario is I scare the shit out of Serral. He makes way too many units. I back off. I come back a little bit later. He makes even more units. I, but I just keep avoiding a, a real committed fight. And just kind of picking off some Zerglings and backing off. Picking off some Zerglings. Creep Tomb is backing off. And if he can just create, keep that threat going. Deny Serral's map vision. Make Serral uncomfortable. And keep Serral low enough on workers. That he actually, even with his delayed third base. Ends up getting ahead on economy. That's kind of the dream. That's what Maru wants to have happen. And of course, this is done without an engineering bay. Or with a quick second gas. So your factory is not too far behind. And of course, this helps you catch up because you weren't mining with that first gas. Uh, hello? 
Uh, stoner, stoner SCV, get back to work, buddy. And I don't think he realized he's only got two on um, gas there. No way. Oh my god, I can't believe he got an overlord there. Sarah's like, are you freaking kidding me, dude? That's actually really huge. A four marine pressure. Any other zerg might have just built enough zerglings to surround and kill this. But Maru was okay with taking that risk. He said, it's Serral. Serral's not going to contest my marines until his link speed's done. So we can actually do a four marine poke, be annoying, maybe get a creep tumor, maybe get an overlord, and then just go home. And behind it, Stim Shields is on the way. Serral should realize what he's up against, but it's hard to say in this scenario. Three queens are out, three more coming out. And his overlord's going to try and fly in the back of this base. Factory goes down right on four minutes. That's what I was talking about. The second gas allows you to have a pretty good factory timing. In TVP with a three racks build, if you're going for a fast engineering bay, you don't get that started till about 4.20. In this case, 20 seconds faster than that, so not bad at all. And seeing that factory timing, Serral should know exactly what he's up against. He drops a baneling nest. He's building some more zerglings. Too many zerglings. Okay, so Serral holding down the zergling key means... Only on 39 drones, he actually needs to get a great fight. If he keeps holding down the link key instead of droning, he should maybe look for a counter bus? I don't know. Mm. It's an awkward scenario because now he goes back to drones, but he built his, his Zerglings way too early. And that, I think, is a bit nasty. Yeah, he's looking for a bit of a run-by, but the wall off is up, man. Serral, I, I really feel his economy is too low, and I said... Ideal, realistic scenario. Scare the shit out of the Zerg. Get him to overbuild fighting units. Not have enough drones. Guess what? It's already succeeded. Maru succeeded even before moving out with his Marines on the map. And now his Marines are forcing even more Zerglings. The trick is he cannot fight into Serral. Well, Serral already lost a few links. Maybe he can. He shouldn't be able to, but he might. If he can bait the Queens off creep, that'll be good. Notice Serral's not respreading his creep yet. He's going to wait for the scan to run out. And then he'll try to think about it. Big wall of queens there. One queen's going to run down and get surrounded. Ling's coming on in. Notice how he... Oh, he's trying to let the queens tank his Serral and let his Zerglings come in afterwards. Great micro by Maru. And he takes a pretty good trade, dude. Now yeah, he just walks away. Walks away. Serral making 12 drones, but he's, he's down in workers right now. Third command center starts up for Maru. Serral. So, so bad in the economy situation in this game. I, I don't think it's game over. When a third command center has just started... You've got to take into account, if you overbuild units that much, you absolutely need to crush that push. Now, I keep seeing people go 10, 12, 13 queens to defend this. I really think it's the worst way to defend this push. Uh, maybe not the worst. I disagree. That's that's way too stiff language. That's way too critical. Um, I think if you're going to go banelings and zerglings, you're better off building a bit more Ling Bane and getting a flank off on the marines with just a six queen build. I think you're actually better off because the queens can't really force the marines to fight. And while queens are very good versus 2-1-1, that's because it's more medevac reliant. This build, the medevacs are a minute later. It's just a big mass of marines. If you get enough lings to hold them in position and kill them, even if you're down on workers, if you kill the first 20 marines off just like say 44 workers, mass ling bane, you crush them. You get a flank on the marines without the medevacs. It's a one-sided engagement. It's really bad for the marine player because he doesn't have the option to pick up and evacuate. Now, notice Maru, he knows that. That's why he's left all these units at home. He's only kept 16 marines out here after the first pressure to join up with his medevacs because any more units and he wouldn't be able to evacuate if he gets in trouble. 16 marines though, perfect number. He fits right on in there. Fourth base is on the way now for Serral. He's back up to 61 workers. Serral could definitely claw his way back. Maru's SCV production, inconsistent at best in this game. He's got five barracks up, but where is his worker production? It sucks right now. Maru's got to focus on that. Maru's not building any SCVs. Is Maru all in? Maru's playing this like he's all in right now. He's only on single engineering bay. The third command center almost seems like it was like a mistake or a fake. It's something he wanted Serral to see and kind of react to. Serral's coming forward. He's got a big flank. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Beautiful link flank on the tanks. But the tanks do get a volley off. One big baneling hit on the Marines. But the Marines also focus down a few more of the banes. The medevacs do take a bit of a bruising. One of them does go down. Nice defense by Serral. He's taken another base on the left side. He'll try to retake this one as well, I think. And the SCVs start up now. Okay, Hydroden just went down. Eight, nine, ten more drones on the way. 
Serra doesn't have a massive worker lead or anything like that. He's got some decent creep, but he's got to keep it going. Maru just wants to keep him distracted enough so he doesn't do that. Oh, nice links around and some Bane's coming in behind it as well. Oh, these are great fights for Serral. And Serral back in the driver's seat. He's got a thousand minerals in the bank. He doesn't have a fifth hatchery or a macro hatch. This is a huge mistake for Serral, guys. I was talking about this uh, in a Raynor series against Maru earlier. If you lose your fourth base, you've got to drop a macro hatch immediately. And you've really got to make sure you keep that lava up because if you miss any injects from here, you're not going to be able to spend your money on just three hatch production. Now, Liberator comes in. Oh, and this catches Serral way off, off guard. He's, he's unsuspecting. Four drones go down. Queen will start working that Liberator. And another one in the main going to be annoying. Oh, Serral! No! Okay, barely keeps that queen alive. This Liberator dancing with this queen in the natural. Serral! Oh, he misclicked it. He could have... Oh, no. Okay, meanwhile... Oh, that's a dead hatchery as well. No cancel. That's a kill. And he... Oh, my God. Serral just lost both queens. Where are the rest of his queens? He didn't bring them back. He was so worried about the front that Serral shat the bed and did not build spores. He did not bring his queens back. And then he got distracted on the front and lost his queens. These two liberators, oh my god, this, this reminds me so much of all my games versus Vindicta. It just feels unfair. The Terran just sieges up one Imber unit. And what? What, do you have to have APM and attention to deal with it? Well, normally Serral would make that look bad and deal with it. That's the sort of move that kills me every time because I suck at this game. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of wild to see Serral so used to being so perfect in his response, under response, saying, no, 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 I'll just handle it with two queens versus two libs. Easy. And then he made the mistake and he gets punished for being a bit too cocky there. So a bit of a mistake there for Serral. Uh, Marine's going to pick up and pull back. Marine tank down here as well. He's going to try and siege up below that ledge. Oh, that's a nasty position, that is. Oh, those tanks are annoying, man. He's going to try and drop across. The queens are going to try and shoot down that. Now, of course, queens take a lot of tank shots before they go down. So really good control here by Serral. He's only lost one queen so far. Gets a medevac. Yeah, this is, this is really good handling by him. Now, the army in the middle is very small. He could easy wipe that, could Serral. His units all kind of funnel around that little movement blocker. And a little bit of a mistake from Serral in the micro. Didn't kill the tank as quickly as he could have. His base is... Guys, he's stuck on three base mining. He's finally got a gold base on the way, but Maru is, is with small armies getting way more value than he has any right to be getting. And this is a tiny army, and he's going to kill a base. Serral could have just A-moved those, with with, uh, those tanks with lings. He could have done it. But now he's going to lose this hatchery for sure. And, and that's a big problem. And look at this. Maru's like, ah, oh, this army's dead. So he realizes, like, let's just leave. And he's going to save it all. Oh, he's so annoying. And Serral's a bit tilted at this point. I guarantee you, if we had his camera up on screen, you'd be seeing him pulling his hair and kind of going, ah! This is not the way he wanted this game to go. Gold base very exposed. He's trying to get back in control. He's had a 2-2 two -two versus 1-1 one -one upgrade lead for a while as well. This base has been untouched. Uh, some Ling run buys, some Bane Ling run buys would be great. He's going to break these rocks and look for a big swamping engage on this fourth base. That could work out very well. If he goes now, the planetary is not ready. There's no reinforced uh, position. There's no tanks or mines. Forces a pickup on the top side. But look at that. Maru's, Maru's rejoining his whole army. And this area, you do not want to fight. This is why this gold base sucks. He can just set up his tanks up here. It's such a bad area for Zerg to attack into. But he's got creep. He's got creep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not too bad. Oh, that widow mine. Ooh, okay, that was bad. Great pullbacks on the Marines there for Maru. That one red hit point Widowmine surviving. I don't think Serral realized it was there as his Overseer had already gone down. So he's making a new one. He's got lots of gas in the bank, but not enough minerals to go right now. Remember, this is a full eight mineral patch gold base. It's got great mining, but he's just going to give it up. He realizes it's a bit of a dead end fighting there. He doesn't have groove spines. No groove spines! Oh no! Serral's using smooth brain hydralisks rather than groove brain. Remember always, guys, you gotta get your groove brain. It gives them plus one range. They do not have that, which means his hydras right now, I think they only have five range. They could have six. It's a really important upgrade for those hydralisks. And the zerglings. Oh, nice widow mine does kill a single morphing baneling. Not the end of the world. Ghost Academy's on the way. Fifth command center on the way as well. Maru here trying to max out before going for the Iron Bank. He's realized this is the way to play it. Make sure there's no area where he can just get wiped off the face of the map. 
And Serral needs to use some movement because there is nothing on the left side. A single tank right now. And Maru, he's really taking liberties. He's realizing that if he puts a sensor tower somewhere, Serral hates moving into sensor tower vision. And he only does it when he's going to full on commit to an attack. And usually there's a bit of a delay him setting up the attack and then going in. Maru's not having to worry about Raynor style little Zergling backstabs hitting his bases. That's why he's able to just rally everything to the front. Because Serral is a front on man. Serral, what is his spirit animal? It's an angry ram that likes to headbutt its opposition to assert dominance. Serral likes to win front on fights and that's exactly what he's going for here. But look at this setup for Maru! Maru just pulling back into layers of tanks and libs and he says my skull is just too thick! You can't headbutt me to death. My skull's thicker than yours, dickhead. And you know what? It's it's everything else is weak for Maru, but this is the one area he cannot fight on his terms. One tank defending nothing else. Nothing but a planetary on the fourth. And he's going to take a fifth on his gold base by the looks of it as well in the midst of all this. Cyril's back is up against the wall and he's taking terrible trades. He's got to cut off the rally. The fact is, he, Maru's rallying across the map. This is something, when you hit Diamond League, you stop doing this because you realize it's bad outside of very particular circumstances because any run by is going to ruin you. But Maru has identified how Serral thinks, how he likes to play, and he said, if I put you in this position, you're just going to try and smash me in a head-on push, and that's exactly what I'm going to commit every single bit of my army towards stopping. The unit's lost tab gets worse and worse. It does not look good for Serral at this point as the tank lib train moves forward. Fifth base going up as a planetary for Maru. Still just Hydra, Ling, Bane. An army which, with a flank, with a surround, might work out. Fighting deep on creep might work out. Where's the creep? It's gone. It's gone! It's all been just wiped off this area. He's cleared this path methodically. And the bio, the ghosts say, come and fight into this bloody mess of a ramp. I know you want to, silly Zerg player. Serral, happy to oblige. He finally sends a Zergling run by. Eight Zergling run by. That is the biggest amount Serral will commit to a run by in this game, apparently. Any more than eight Zerglings, not something he wants to take away from his army, and he cannot break that rally. Maru reinforcing his push way too hard. Ties up the series two to two. Back to even here. And uh, an unfortunate turn of events, that lovely tank spot getting him on a map, which... Really, I think, should have been in his favor. He now goes into a map, which is most certainly not in the Zerg's favor. It's Blackburn. This is Serral in the right. Maru in the left. Now, don't get me wrong. Serral usually is the best Zerg player in the world at winning on the smallest rush distance maps. I wonder if that ability to knuckle down and play ZVT, and he always beats Terrans on Beckett, on Submarine, on Cyberforest back in the day. Whatever the rush distance map is, Serral almost always has a disgusting win rate versus Terran on those maps. Now, does that carry over to Blackburn though? Because this isn't about short rush distance. Blackburn is about the evil face we see in the bottom of the map. You're gonna notice there's an eye here, an eye here, and then we've got a bit of a, a kind of downturned mouth with a lovely little split mustache. And you can tell that this guy is very angry and serious, and he's always cheering for Terran players. That's definitely not a Xeno face. It's not a Zerg face. That's a Terran face, and it's he's he's there. He's the pirate. That is Blackburn the pirate here on Blackburn the map. I definitely didn't just notice that right now, and um, that is kind of creepy though, right, guys? As he goes, that's an eye. Apparently, that's one of the eyes. These little little bits of terrain. That that face definitely hates Zerg. Um, yeah, the main problem is most of the fighting on this map is actually around the face of this. Um, on this path, right? And you've got slow zones, really bad for the, the short ranged Zerg units. Uh, once you open these rocks, it gets a bit better, but you've also got some nice ledges and you've got a very one directional map. Now you can argue it's hard for Terran to pressure because they have to pressure in a predictable pattern. So it's easy for Queens to defend early games. Zerg could be a bit greedy, but you can also argue that, that when the Terran gets to four bases, where does the Zerg multi-prong? If they can't break the Terran here, this, this front base, where do they go? They can break those rocks and go there, but it's kind of hard to break those rocks. And if they go all the way around the top, it's a big, big diversion. It's a big de uh, detour. It's hard to get there. Now, for those who don't know, this map hates Zerg in a few ways. There's a Terran who's having a bit of a nap there on break. And it looks like his hand's down his pants. Oh, no. Uh, anyways, uh, up here, we've got an Ultralisk trapped as well in a cage. Um, down there, we have some Hydralisks that have been chained down. 
If we get vision of them, you'll see they're actually alive and they're moving. They're trying to break out of their restraints. We can't see it through the fog of war. But uh, yeah, this is like a weird Terran test facility where they do all sorts of evil shit to Zerg. So definitely a map which is going to be hard for Serral. And it is expected for Maru to win here. Well, not expected, but you know, he's favored. So that's a pretty late third base, guys. Three minute third. But he's got Ling speed. No more roach shenanigans from Serral. I said he would do it game one. But I, I got to be real, guys. Maru has lost so many games. Him and Clem both to Mass Roach Ravager. And they still, every game, even when they see it, will just take the exposed third at the front and build depots in front of it and basically just sacrifice the game due to it. I kind of wish Serral did go for Roach Ravager. Um, just because, I mean, if Maru, you know, died so splendidly to it in game one after scouting it minutes ahead of time, maybe just maybe. Maybe just maybe. Won't be the case here, though. Oh, it's a Marauder build, or is it? No, it's not. It's not. He cancelled the Marauder. He cancels... Concussive makes stim, cancels stim, cancels marine, makes the orbital, and makes more hellions. He's like, wait a second. All right, let's just go build some add-ons. <laughs> so he's going to go viking, but because he got scouted, and there's a very quick vein nest here for Serral, Serral might play extra safe. And he already is playing pretty darn safe. So he's, he's saying, I was going to go for a uh, held out marauder timing. We're not going to do it now. I'm just going to build a banshee. I'm not going to make cloak. He got more minerals. He was short on minerals before, so we might still make cloak. It'll be a bit, a bit late. It's probably just a defensive banshee. And uh, just going to chill out. The Viking here has already found one overlord. That overlord pulls back, though. Very wise of Serral. He's going to pull back this one as well. Yep, Queen's ready to defend it. Uh, this overlord pretty far forward. So we, you might lose one of these other ones, but even that's going to be hard for the Viking to snack. To snack? The Viking is like, God, that Ovi looks like a right snack. Done it. Done it? It's in it not done it <laughs> doesn't it i just tried to say doesn't it like isn't it like a british person nice um besides my absolutely rambling words guys we are looking for a bit of a hellion dive he's gonna get the overlord the queens are in position serral totally disrespected that by the way he, he knew the hellions were gonna turn around transfuse transfuse gets it keeps her alive maru there uh, he gets edged a little bit, that Viking, unable to get to completion. It's a little frustrating. Third base does float down, guys. We've got 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way. We've got three barracks. Make it fourth and fifth barracks. Factory can lift off as well. Starport adding a reactor for its medevac. Banshee in the main says, Hello, I'm a Banshee with no cloak. I'd like to harass, but I've decided it's not a good idea. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to back off for now. Double Evo chamber in the natural spores in every single base. 63 drones, 18 zerglings. And what do we got? Queens moving on forward. Zergling sees the third base. Definitely would love a bit of a Ling run by on that base. There's not many Marines out right now. Double Evo chamber upgrades. Should be about a minute, but oh, probably like 45 seconds or so behind, depending on how quick Serral is to start those. Baneling speed on the way. Queens come forward. And you should be able to replace this creep very quickly. One, one Rodeo. One, one Zerg. Um, okay, so he gets all those 50 seconds behind on those. Just over 50 seconds behind on the upgrades. It's a sizable disadvantage in the upgrades, which is a little weird for a Hydra style, but he does have Bane speed at a very good timing. So any early stim push will be meeting Baneling speed head on. And I love that Serral takes the conservative fourth base. He's not taking the stupid gold base until afterwards. So he'll mine the gold if he can, but then he'll just transfer drones up here most likely. So... Just a bit more of an intelligent way of doing it. Um, I do wonder. He scans up there. Ooh, I think he's going to put the tank here. Let's see. Hellion's looking for those active tumors, but oh, there's a lot of zerglings. That's a lot of zerglings. Oh my god. Oh, you'd, I would go for the surround on it. I would just go. Don't. You got banelings. Why dilly dally? Oh, Serral wants more. Serral says, I don't give a shit about just getting a tank and a few marines. I don't care about that gold base. I want to do damage, son. He's going to click on the command center. Fourth command center gets canceled. Ling Bane in the rear with the gear. Baneling's on the mineral line. is more important than the marines right now. He's got to go for the marines. He's killing so much. But Maru, Chad Maru dives on the queens. But no, speed banes are there. And that means it's all going to be held a good spready. But my god, Maru just gets ravaged. And it looks like we're going to see a 3-2 lead potentially from this. This is a game ending. 20, 21, 22 SCVs going down. He even keeps some of the lings alive. Cancels the fourth command center. 
keeps his base alive, doesn't lose any drones. He's still on 70 workers. I mean, Serral could come with round two right now. What is there to defend? A tank, 16 Marines. Honestly, Serral could just hold down the Ling Bane key and kill him. He's going to try and roll Bane Lings in, but there is a depot wall. Marines are going to go hunt for it. Maru, good senses there. And he will stop those Bane Lings in their tracks. Oh my god, he almost lost them. Serral could have actually manually detonated that. Would have been pretty cool. Gets a few Marines nonetheless. And his work account wasn't great before, but he uses the momentum from that massive units to go to 83 workers. Infestation pit's almost finished. And this is gonna be a game where, honestly, Maru has one choice, and that is Maru's favorite choice. I'm gonna turtle, and maybe I survive for 15 minutes, and then the game's even. Um, chances of that happening, highly unlikely. Serral just took a massive lead. The, the, the choice, remember, the early game scouting was good for Serral. He shut down the Viking, it didn't do anything. The Banshee ended up being a wasted investment, and he gave up a fifth hatchery he didn't care about, and, and, and did massive, massive damage. So now Maru is crawling back into a macro game against a Zerg who should be maxed out while he's at 150 supply. And that's exactly what Serral's looking for. 2-2 two is a little behind and he, he's got Hydra upgrades on the way. How many Hydras? Only four Hydras on the way. He's making seven more drones. I think that might be a few too many. Oh, nice drippy drop. Finds the uh, the opening. It's five drones, including a Spore Crawler being a bit of a nuisance there. Very well done. Hive's almost finished. Now, Serral is just playing Hydra Ling Bane. I think with these numbers advantage, that's fine. If this was an even game, I'd say do Broodlord Infested. Just don't do it from behind, man. Like, I think it was Glittering Ashes, right? Where he tried to go Broods from behind, but do it from... Do it do it from even. Do it from ahead, right? And that would be cool. I think it's fine to play Lurker Ling Bane, Hydra Ling Bane here. I do think he shouldn't focus on the Lurkers. He should really focus on hitting a maxed out timing. Especially because if Maru takes a fourth, easy angle to attack is the fourth base and down here at the same time he's not going to be able to defend all that what's he got a widow mind drop a few marines distracting and okay but Serral's giving him that time now i i often criticize Serral for being a bit too cautious even but he sees a fourth being taken it's go time son it's absolutely go time the funny thing is maru's not even defending the fourth he's almost all defending here i still think he can get rolled by just mansling vein hydra Kills another base? Serral getting distracted by this Widow Mine drop right now. It only gets four drones, but it, it forces Spore Crawlers out. His Overseers has to come back. These Widow Mines being a big old nuisance. Look at that. He's going to get it burrowed. He gets it burrowed. Yeah, that's not dead. That's going to survive. Marine drop pulls back there as well. Okay, Overseers did go up. Serral cleans that up, but Maru happy to sacrifice a few units to get his fourth established. Right now, Maru's like, just survive, max out, survive, max out, survive. And, and Serral's making mass baneling, which is the worst composition against tanks that are spread. Now, there's still a lot of marines, and there's no ghosts and, and no marauders yet, so the banelings are okay, but I actually think he wants to be heavier on the zerglings. This is a problem a lot of players have had against Maru, is going too heavy on the banelings versus a guy who masses tanks. Oh, boom, baby! Ten drones go down, that could have been even worse, but still causing such a ruckus with such a small investment. Serral's gonna go for the break. He does not have Blinding Cloud. He doesn't go have Blinding Cloud. He's gonna try and abduct some tanks in here. He grabs one in. The Bane Link's going into the mineral line. The Marines and SCVs there are getting taken down. Oh, okay, this looks like it should be a good enough attack to, uh, to finish Ser uh, Maru off. Another wave of Bane Links comes in. What has he got? A, a Widow Mine drop and four Marines. And Serral is gonna take the, the this, this, this with this push. He does lose a few drones to the Widow Mines. Queens are finally cleaning that, but he's up at 84 drones, even after losing a solid uh, 29 workers. He's killed 40, he kills every single medevac. And man, it really felt like on this map, I thought Maru had a great chance, but Serral's just swamping over him. And Serral has this game in the bag. He's just going to make some lurkers, kill this base, and uh, and roll through. There's, there's nothing left for Maru. So the numbers do end up sealing the deal on Blackburn. Tried to beat the Widow Mine, but the tank was there. What do we got? So we've got plus one range, plus three melee, adrenal glands. We've got adaptive talons on the way. All right. Lurker's going to come on forward there. Oh. I love the Lurker harass. He does have seismic spines. Oh, that tank is barely not in... I think it's not in vision range. I think it's in Lurker range. He goes for a bust down the bottom. What? His whole army just got absolutely minced. Where, was that only part of his army? Where's the rest of his units? 
How did that happen? There's not that many units for Maru right now, but Serral just took an awkward fight. He's at 95 drones. Oh, he's a bit too high on drones. As long as he keeps securing new bases, he should be breaking these rocks, taking that top base, and just keep... He could just run up here with all of his lurkers and just burrow them and kill that base. So that's an easy target right now. And that's... If he gets rid of the mining on the fourth, I mean, Maru's dry. Um, he's going to make a lot more Ling Bane, a lot more lurkers. He's trying to make two Vipers right now. He's going to make a Dropper Lord to put some Banes in. Scan that gets that lurker. Even just baiting scans for lurkers. When you've got 95 drones, that's probably not too bad for Serral. But Serral's letting this base. He keeps attacking this angle. I don't know why he's not just running up and sieging on that with his lurkers. You could even siege it from up here. Like with a single lurker would be a great little harassment right now. You get a lurker in range of that tank up there. Might kill it before it even kills you. Serral's kind of chilling for a little bit. He's waiting for a few more Hydras and Zerglings. And not really feeling the urgency a lot of players do against Maru. He's miles ahead right now. He's going to think about breaking those rocks. He's got a Lurker Drop. So he's going to go Lurker Drop here and then down here, which is an awesome Lurker Drop angle. You do that while pushing elsewhere, it can be great. But Maru's getting to Ghosts. Serral really dropping the ball right now and letting Maru get to the point of the game where he's scary. I mean, there's so much bank that I don't know if it matters. He's going to go and attack the same angle one more time. Can he break through this time around? He's being very cautious. Breaks down the missile turret. I think he wants to attack while the lurkers attack. But he's he's foreshadowing this attack. So the whole army comes. Great EMP. And oh my god. He goes in. He borrows the lurkers. And then he pulls back. He, he's not brave enough to commit there. He's like, nah, this is not a good fight. But he's he's still left this base. It's barely defended. That ultra's like, let me out. Let me out, him, son. Arr, arr, fuck him up, sir. Fuck him up and let me out. Let me out, bro. Meanwhile, Maru is, is in the midst of just surviving in a situation where nobody else could survive. And it's such good reads of the situation. His is literally, whenever the army's down here, his whole army's here. Whenever Serral's army's up here, his whole army's here. Look, his ghosts are in position. If lurkers run, he's ready to snipe them. That lurker I was talking about from before comes up, just gets popped. But here we go, nice lurker drop from behind. That's a frustrating one to deal with, that is. Lurkers in two of the bases. Now, Serral's gonna try to jump on this base at the same time, but his Ling Bane should be attacking from the left. It shouldn't be there. So I don't know why the Ling Bane is sitting on the same control group right at that point. The Hydras come forward, they're gonna clean up. No, they aren't, the Liberator survives. The Ling Bane running around the left side. These Queens walking forward to their death as well. It looks like Maru somehow cleaned up the drop. The Banelings are gonna roll in. This should not be going this way, Serral is running in in disarray. He's running around like a headless uh, lurker right now. The, this base should have gone down in that trade. He's, he's, what's the units loss tab? I don't know how he's this inefficient when he's had this much more material to work with. He's down 10,000 resources. He's got this base mining. He hasn't opened up that base, which means the longer this goes, he will run out of places to mine from. He's had a very good work account for a long time and he still could absolutely win this game. Now, obviously this army on the south, He's, he wants to abduct or blinding cloud to bust this, but he keeps getting EMP'd whenever he tries to. He's got two full energy vipers. A one good blinding cloud swamp in could still absolutely do it. But right now, Maru is going to try and take this command center in the top left. If he gets that up, that's a really big lurker drop. Going to go around the left side. Feels like Seru. Seru, similar to the earlier map. Um, when he had a little bit of momentum in one of his earlier maps, he also kind of slowed down a little bit. You can't slow down. Actually, sorry, it was, it was, a, it was a Raynor game that I cast earlier that I'm thinking of. Where Raynor had the same issue. Maru survives so well at a certain point, you start to doubt whether these engagements are any good. And the moment you hesitate against Maru, you give him a moment's peace and look at these defenses he sets up. They're bloody Imber, man. He's so good at defending with this Terran toolkit. He's so goddamn good at just hanging on. And look at this. He's trying to just clear this ground, make it hard for Serral to control that. Lurker drop round two's coming in. Serral's thinking about going Broodlords right now because he's not actually killing Maru. And he's not trading that amazingly either. Now, nice lurker drop. He did break the rocks in the bottom, by the way. So he's going to take that hatchery down there, which is very smart. The ghost comes in. And good dodges. Oh, the ghost keeps getting interrupted. Lurker, though, not able to kill it. Lurker in the natural, going to kill a few SCVs. This is a great move. He, oh, Blinding Cloud busts the front. But, ah, uh, I think he maybe could have got the planetary if he committed, but he pulls back there. Doesn't quite get it. Lots of Zerglings in the north. Planetary has been erected. Two tanks on the edge, plus a Liberator. Beautiful setup there. And look at that. He saves the Lurker. He's going to go back. Going to drop it down there. Maru should be able to deal with this, though. And all Serral's doing is massing Ling Bane right now. And I've talked about it a lot, guys. Mass Banelings does not beat Tank Ghost. It is the worst thing you could do. There is no longer a Marine composition here. There is 12 Ghosts. But that is not the most important thing. 
Lings do not terribly verse ghosts. They don't do that bad versus ghosts. They're not great, but you need the lings to kill the tanks. You need the, the lings to swarm forward. Some banelings in there, but this is so heavy on the banes. He's got 70 zerglings, a little bit better on the mix, I think. But he's attacking down a brutal choke point. He can block the planetary, that's for sure. Serral has money for days. He takes out the planetary. If he can get on the ghost, this might be enough. He's going to pull back those tanks. Kill so many banelings on the way out, though. And Serral, he's got the bottom base going up in the top base. Guys, Serral won this game 10 minutes ago, and he has failed to finish Maru off. And it's actually disgusting at this point. Maru, he's so good at making comebacks from behind. And it's it's crazy that he's hanging in there. But at the same time, I do see Serral being hesitant. This is wide open for Zergling run base right now. That top base, wide open for lurkers to run in and jump on it. He's got to get rid of these sensor towers because the sensor towers have literally bullied Serral away from every game-winning position in this game. He's too afraid to go into sensor tower range and Maru's taking advantage of that. He's centering his whole army. This is the one place you do not want to fight as Serral. Serral can force him to reposition. Maru's nowhere near max, but he's trying to go Broodlord Corrupter now. Infester! He's trying to do Broodlord Infester, but he's going to lose his middle bases and he's already mined out most of the bases on his side of the map. He doesn't have that big bank. If he went straight to Broodlord and Fester, he'd have a big bank to, to back him up and work off. As it is, he's going to come down here as a bit of a last-ditch effort. But by this point, Maru, he's already just spread. And Maru now has an army spread across the entire map. Blackburn has been locked down. And the Zerg virus has been isolated, guys. There are travel restrictions. There is no dining out on Blackburn. There, you can only buy one package of toilet paper from the grocery store, Serral. Serral's like, fuck this, you're messing with my Zerg rights. Free. Meanwhile, Maru's like, dude, this is how we get rid of the Zerg virus. This is how we control the spread of your toxic creep tumor bullshit. And, and honestly, Serral's going to lose both middle bases. And where can he fight? Mass Ling would kill these. But he's got to find, he's got to come in with like big packs of 30, 40, 50 lings. Kill four or five tanks, run away. Kill four or five tanks, run away. This, this sort of tank spread is so, so powerful. And it's so dirty that, you know, as a Zerg player, you don't want to make mass ling in the late game. But you kind of have to send these big waves of lings in and do exactly what you can. Uh, this is actually a, a big, big issue. But Serral has gone the ultimate late game comp. So he could still win from here. Remember, Maru took a terrible fight into Broodlords earlier. It's just that Maru is going to have a little bit fresher bases. Super fresh there. Not many minerals there, but if he holds this base as well, he's good. And he's denied the two middle bases, which while Serral was doing the I'm going to overwhelm you in the mid game style, he was not fully mining those two middle bases, right? He did transfer workers to the top reasonably quickly, but he didn't actually do that. And I really feel if you guys are going to just swamp over your opponent, Hydraling Bane, Hydraling Bane, Lurker, try and kill, try and kill, try and kill. If you fully saturate the middle bases, it gives you insurance. If you fully saturate and mine those out, so if you do transition to a slower style and have to give them up, you've already mined out most of the resources on them. And that's that's really a nice insurance mechanism that you can add in there. At the moment, there's still a big a couple of lurkers, eight infestors, three vipers, eleven broodlords are out. He's gonna go to 14 broodlords, and Thors are being built for Maru. Now, Thors are very good against broodlords if you can EMP every spell cast of the Zerg has. And if you can't, and then neural parasite, god forbid. Or just blinding cloud to make it so your Thors have to waddle around rather than actually shooting. Thors look like a really awkward ass fucking unit. Now, that being said, if they're just fighting Broodlords and both sides are unsupported, the Thors, each Thor can kill maybe three, four Broodlords. They're very efficient in that regard. Of course, they cost a bit more supply, a little bit more money than a Broodlord, but they're still insanely cost efficient. So you don't want to go too heavy on Thors because they become a big blinding cloud target, potentially neural parasite or abduct target. But if you can just get five or six out, which it appears he's stopping at just four for now, though he is max, um, they, they will kill those Broodlords at extreme range with extreme prejudice. Hydra's run forward. Uh, Lurker there is trying to kill these tanks. Uh, the scan and the one shot, it does go down. And Serral, I, I can't believe he's made, he's, he's been pushed back to this phase. And I, I really feel like Serral, it's, it's the Blackburn effect. There's not many good attack angles, but it was also, why did he not just bring his whole army around on that detour or just burrow the lurkers on this base earlier? He let Maru take that gold and that gold basically is, is the one little bit of energy that Maru used to punch his way out of the grave in this game. And that's what's got him back into this. Maru now has plus three vehicle weapons, plus one armor, plus two on the way. He's got blue flame hellbats. Why is he going blue flame hellbats? You might wonder. They are there to kill the broodlings very quickly. Having a few Hellbats mixed in is just going to kill all the Broodlings. They're going to one-shot like 10 Broodlings per Blue Flame shot. 
So it's very effective. Just have a few Hellbats kind of guarding your Thors. And he is going up to six Thors for now. He's also adding air upgrades, advanced ballistics. So he's going to go Liberator Range, Ghost, Thor, fucking bitter everything, isn't it? It's such an awkward army to control, but if there's one guy who can do it, it's probably him. Watch out for the spells from Serral. Serral throws some babies, but then the babies go, Mom! And they run straight back to Mama. Um, these ones are actually going to be thrown into battle. As you can see, they disappear pretty quickly to the ghosts and so on. Okay, Maru's going to try and build a base in the top. What a savage. If that gets up, Serral will be so triggered looking at this replay. He'll be like, you built a base on location in the top middle? And Maru will be like, yeah, I was thinking maybe you wouldn't check it. <laughs> if he gets away with that, it's actually wild. What are those medevacs doing? Oh, he's sacrificing them. So he sacrifices a few medevacs. He says, I've got too many. I've got five all left over. That's more than enough. Kills the base in the bottom as well. Um, a reminder in the people in the chat, we don't condone balance whining in this channel. Um, so, you know, in case anyone's uh, about to get whiny, I already see a few people saying comments. Uh, if you guys are regulars, that doesn't matter if it's sarcastic or not. You're, you're in text. Sarcasm doesn't work in text, guys. So, uh, yeah, keep it going. Yeah. You, you got to understand that when we don't have these rules, if you guys have ever gone, go, go to the ESL SC2 channel during a big tournament, read the chat there. If you ever need an explanation as to why we don't condone, condone balance whining, even sarcastic balance whining, go and read a big tournament channel. Maybe look at the, the GSL YouTube chat channel. It's a really fun place. It's literally like you lose 70 IQ just for opening that chat. Um, it's, it's actually painful. This is a critical mass of Broodlords. They can pretty much one-shot a Thor at this point. I, I can't believe he's still going Thors. I mean, Thor range lib is a composition I've been trying to use, but he's only got four libs. The idea is the libs zone out the infestors, and then you EMP the vipers, and your Thors kill everything. And this is really good in, in, in theory. In praxis, it, it doesn't work so well. Ah, my god, can he get a one? Oh, got, got a decent fungal. How many infestors are left in there, guys? Eight. There's eight infestors underneath. There are eight infestors underneath right now. Oh, he's, he's kept four in reserve as well. One Broodlord falls. Great Parasitic Bomb. Juicy, juicy Parasitic Bomb. Maru's so quick to respond. It doesn't do too much. It just forces him back for a moment. And guys, we're going to check in in the Units Lost tab. There is a 15,000 resources advantage right now for Maru in the Units Lost tab. So it's very important that several either controls these two bases and mines them or trades better. Now, I have seen Solar many times trade better than the Terran in late game with Broodlord and Fester. I know Serral can do it as well, but Serral does not practice it as much as Solar. Even Solar doesn't really like to play it because it's a very slow, grindy sort of game, and he does tend to get his whole army nuked uh, right after he's basically secured the win. Now, I doubt that's going to happen to Serral here. Serral is not Solar. He is not cursed. Uh, you didn't hear it from me, guys. I'm pretty sure Solar's cursed. Uh, <laughs> I love Solar. He's such a Chad, but I think he might be. Anyways, oh, oh, big fungaloo, big fungaloo, big fungaloo. Oh, but he's not able to get the connect and the finish on him. He only gets a few of those ghosts. Bunch of the infestors getting impeded. Notice he rotates. Serral, the Chad gamer that he is, he only keeps a few infestors on a hotkey and the rest in reserve. I've been talking about this for a while, how you only ever need about four or five, maximum six infestors on a control group. The number of times we see people put 13 infestors together and get them all hit by one EMP. Serral is so effing smart. He's actually made the adjustment that nobody else made. He's just said, look, I will, I do make mistakes in late game. I will just leave some infestors behind. Protoss have done this for years with our High Templar against Terran EMP. Why don't we learn from the race that has a lot more practice playing against ghosts with spellcasters? Oh, this is a crazy fight. There's no, no blinding cloud though. No blinding cloud, man. Okay, he gets one blinding cloud, but it doesn't get all of the Thors. I think he's one-shotting some of these Thors though, right? The Broodlords are getting some pretty brutal volleys off. The problem there is like 20 Broodlords just shot one Hellbat. And obviously the Hellbat dies, but then all the Broodlords just, all the Broodlings die to everything else. You see, he keeps one-shotting the same unit. Just kind of, why sometimes there's an advantage doing things differently. That Viper runs forward and gets one shot at 11 range from those 250 millimeter Punisher cannons. Those big, big Thors have pulled out those giant cannons on their shoulders. Will they be able to land it? It's a parasitic bomb goes down. Not a single neural or blinding cloud able to land here. And that is an absolute destruction. Serral walks his spellcasters into lib zones 
and EMPs, and without the spellcaster support, the Broodlords get absolutely savaged by the Thors. The snipes backing up the Thors make it even more brutal. And that there was a devastating engagement. We said it was 15,000 resource advantage. Guess what? 21,000 now. That's an extra 6,000 resources of value from Maru Serral. Wanting to defend this base, just got baited into taking the game losing fight. He's gonna have one Remax in him, but unless he takes in near perfect and, and he's remaxing on Lurker's wrong composition, that will not do it. I know Thors are kind of good versus Broodlords, but I guarantee you if he micro that better, that would have been okay. Serral went for a lazy engagement. He lost patience, and I think he's a little triggered in this game because he was so far ahead earlier. His Corruptors, are, he's just throwing away his Corruptors right now. Oh my god, Maru. Maru was fucking dead in this game. And you know what, guys? Maru and Serral? Dark to, to, in this year, Dark, these gods of the game are so famous because they always make comebacks, but they don't do it against each other. And this is the rare case where Maru has resurrected himself. As I say that, he walks his army into a choke point and Serral just absolutely bangs the shit out of that army. Oh my Lord. Don't walk your whole army into a choke point of slow zone. That there. Maru literally won the game and then he may have just thrown the game. Uh, there's not much mining. He's got still this mining base. So maybe he's okay because Serral's out of mining. Serral needs to win with this army. And the problem he has is he's got no anti-air right now. His Corruptors are coming back. He's trying to build more to kill the Liberators. He's got to go around and engage the Siege, though. He cannot engage this front on. Snipe pops a Lurker. The Liberator's doing good. His army's getting clumped up. He gets a great fungal from behind, but the pick up into the Metavax. And even though the Libs and the Tanks are getting taken out, Serral needs to win with this army. And he will get rid of the mining on this base at the very least. I wouldn't mind him borrowing just some of the Lurkers. Oh, the SCVs get absolutely bashed. Four or five mineral patches in the top left. About a thousand minerals, maybe two thousand spread across those. Base being retaken in the north, base mining in the south. Several double the army supply right now. Dude, Maru won the game and then he threw the game, and now it's 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 a lead on the army for several, but it's a it should be a lead on the income for Maru. The moment he lands this, he's got way more mining, he's got more SCVs. Now he doesn't really have mules. Remember, he's only got I'm blind. Seven orbitals. Oh, he's got plenty of scans. He's got plenty of scans and mules. Never mind, guys. So that lurker did go down. This base is under siege. Serral, he does not want to lose that base, but he might have to. His infestors creeping their way forward. He wants some cheeky fungals. He wants some cheeky fungals. He's going to go for some murals. Murals on the tanks. He takes two of the tanks and they start firing on their own unit. Oh, the lurker plus neural assault. A Chad maneuver here. For Serral, and he kills a command center. He Oh, he leaves a tank. One of his tanks that he stole because he doesn't want to get all of his lurkers sniped on the way out. And Serral taking some Chad fights right here. He's got one more infester there. He killed the command center. Maru trying to float a new command center down to the bottom. He should just use the one that's right next to it. Not the right command center to lift, buddy. Meanwhile, Serral still horny. He still wants to finish this game. He's got a base mining in the top. He gets a bunch of ghosts there. The Corruptors are hot on the tail, but four ghosts managed to fairly evacuate. And those ghosts are his lifeline right now. Serral getting sick pickoffs left, right, and center. He can deny this bottom base. He wins this game. 46 army supply for Maru, 64 for Serral. Serral, not expected to trade efficiently with these compositions, but he's finding a way and he's got a base mining. He's got 700 gas in the bank, so it's mostly Zerglings he'll be building once that gets exhausted, but he's retaking a hatchery in the bottom. And you know what, guys? Maru's top base is dry. He's got 300, 500 minerals left. This base is his only mineral income. I say only, wait, and 65 minerals there. <laughs> He's got almost nothing left. There's a creepy infester down the bottom. He has to keep building missile turrets or the infestors will get him. This is a good spready of tanks, though. It's a good spready. The infester gets caught coming in for the flank. And this might be the fight that Maru was waiting for. Where's the Zergling support? It does not exist. The limit does not exist, says Lindsay Lohan. And Serral unfortunately just lost the core of his army. Ah, uh, fucking A. I think he might have... I, I don't know. Oh, he's going to lose the bottom base as well. Ah! Ah! What even is this game? Maru died at the seven and a half minute mark of this game. Remember that. He died at the seven and a half minute mark. He died. It's 32 minutes in. And they're neck and neck in army supply, in worker supply. There are still three lurkers, seven corruptors, two infestors. I, I don't even know. Maru could still lose. Serral still has a chance of winning because he's got a freshie. 
He's got two mineral patches, but this base here, I think, might just have a, a bit too much minerals with the mules. Because that income... Mm. Every Terran player looks at those mules and he's just licking his lips. <laughs> Making creepy fucking mouth noises like Hannibal Lecter. Lurkling Bane coming on fourth. The Baneling's going to try and roll into the mineral line, but it's a beautiful spready. Maru with his gymnastics. Walks a goddamn tightrope from being literally dead. Literally, literally dead. To, to coming back with a 20,000 resource advantage, I, I don't, in the units lost, I don't even know. He takes a 3-2 to two lead, we have to go to the next map, what the shit. Oh, right, a little bit of a mess up for him in that last game, a slip up. And he did end up getting slapped in the late game. Still think he, he had absolutely every chance to win that game, but a bit of impatience with the late game Broodlord Infestor fight. Walking his Infestors into the libs, and some brilliant EMPs of course, just stopping him in his tracks, this is Serral. Now what was really impressive about Maru there is he kind of slowly inched that push forward in the north in the late game. Other than the amazing comeback up to that point. He slowly inched that army forward and then the moment he saw Serral committing, I think it was a bit too obvious that Serral was committing to the fight. And you just see him drop. He just dropped the EMPs all over everything, man. He was like, no, 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 no. No spellcasters for you. And I think that's got to be a bit of a brain breaker for Serral because... Uh, this could be 3-2 in his favor. He, he set himself up for the victory. He played a fantastic early game. But there was that, that first big follow-up attack with lurkers on the bottom into a beautiful line of tanks. And his army was in a big old blob. And we saw just how bad that attack angle in the south of Blackburn can be. That, that choke point. You know, he was coming right off the face of that evil man in the bottom of that map. And dude, his lurkers got smashed. His Ling Bane got smashed. And... I think a few too many times having his unit comp maybe a little a little out of balance but more importantly i think he just left the gold base alone for far too long maru had a single tank and a single planetary at a gold base up against a, a maxed out several who had tons of lurkers with range and it, it really would have been just the decision to move even half of his army up there earlier would have been a dominating victory in that last game he was so far ahead in supply it didn't need to be perfect play from Serral, but he needed to utilize that advantage at that moment. And that was, well, not even that moment, at that window, and it was a pretty large window, but trying to jump through that window, somehow Serral smashed into the wall, missed the window completely, and Maru fought his way back into that game, and I think that gives you a lot of momentum. Making a comeback like that is absolutely wild. It is just a huge thing, especially against Serral, especially in a grand finals, because as Maru, you're like, I had no business winning that game, Holy crap. And it, it really is going to buoy your spirits. It's going to gonna lift you up a little bit. While Serral is going to go, I should freaking won that game. And he was probably saying that from 10, 13 minutes in. How have I not won yet? What the shit? Screw Blackburn. Screw Terran. Maru's too strong. Re Keeping a cool, calm, collected view after you let such a position slip away. Most players can't do it. Most players cannot do it. We'll see if Maru can. Or Serral can, sorry. Got the command center there. Going down, quick third CC. We're going to see a very standard, maybe, final game here. It's kind of funny because it feels like Maru does not have a lot of confidence in being able to beat Zergs with super straight up play in the mid game. Like, he very rarely kills someone in the mid game unless it's Rogue. It's because I just feel like Rogue is not as solid under pressure as the other top Zergs. Uh, Rogue might be plus 50 IQ, but. Keeping his, uh, his, his calm under pressure. Not on the same level as the Serral, the Raynors, the Darks, these guys. As the Karak there just cheering things on. Karak! I'm a Karak! I do love this animal. What do you guys think Karak tastes like? Do you think it just tastes like emu? Or, uh, or like uh, ostrich or something like that? Has anyone ever eaten emu or ostrich? I've never eaten either of those. I imagine they'd be kind of turkey-ish. But I don't know, it's kind of a bigger animal. Maybe it'd be a bit more red than me. Oh, two barracks follow-up. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought that was a starport building. It was a second barracks. Never mind, Maru's doing the double barracks follow-up. Does definitely like that. Is eating emu an Aussie thing? I don't even know. Are there any Aussies in the chat? Guys, can we, can we get a Google? Can you... 
is there is that a thing? I've never eaten emu. Like, can, can you eat emu? You definitely can't eat cassowary. That would be messed up. I think they're in. Are they endangered? Well, they're just not very common. But people in the in the chat can let us know if they've ever eaten emu, what it tasted like, and is that actually a thing or nah? Chat says no. You're, you're not allowed to eat emu. <laughs> oh, it was in the treaty after we lost the Great Emu War. Apparently, they said you shall not eat our species, and we will not destroy your civilization. So. We, Australia took one for the team there, and now we live in, maybe not harmony, but pro-prosperity, -pros you know? It's, it's with the pro-prosperity pact. It's, it's okay. It's all right. Lair baneling nest on the way. Third base as well. Beautiful rule of one gas, and he's going to go double evo chamber there. So it's going to be hydroling bane for Serral. And he's going to be dealing with that double marine drop. Remember, I was talking, um, for those who are watching live, there was a game earlier where he hit kind of late because he lost some early marines, I think. Or what was it? No, it was a pool first. Was it early? I can't even remember if it was this series. Guys, we've been casting this for so long at this point. Holy crap. Those who've stuck around from start to finish, thank you for making it here. Uh, especially if you've done it in one sitting, let me know. I think that's pretty rare. For anyone on YouTube, at least, I mean. Obviously on Twitch, if you're here the whole time, you're here the whole time. Um, but yeah, that's going to hit 545. This is much better than the previous two on one time we saw from Mara after that. The pool first got him. Oh, he misses the active tumor. Every Terran hates this. Oh, just And that can just respread over there if it wants, or down here. So nice nice and annoying there for Maru. Fourth base is on the way for several. Now, he's being very slow on macro hatches. He's going to go straight for Hydroden. Five gas play. And where are these upgrades? So we've got 65 seconds along versus 30 seconds along. So a 30 second lead for Maru in the upgrades. Where's those extra two barracks, Maru? They're kind of late at this point, buddy. Maru's pretty focused on his pressure and he's a little late on his fourth and fifth barracks. And there we go. They are going down at the third base right now. Helene's coming on forward. Good micro though. I like the Hellions to back it up. Gets a bunch of Zerglings for just one Marine. You can now rotate into the main. This one spore crawler, guys, if you ever play this map, always spread creep in the main and put a spore here. Or oh, they can be very annoying dropping between this angle. This forces them to commit way deeper. And look at that. That medevac takes a lot of damage. Almost goes down. Serral calmly droning that fourth base now. He's on 71 workers. Remember, guys, with five gas, three bases is just 63 drones. So 71 means he's got a half-saturated fourth base. If he goes another eight drones, that's fully saturated at just 79 workers. That's four mineral lines going. It is, though, important to secure a fifth because about eight minutes 30, this mineral patch, this one, this one, and this one are all going to run out at the same time. So you'll need to transfer eight workers from the main down to the fifth base. So you guys can actually, a lot of people forget to transfer workers. And I always tell people, don't look at the numbers. Don't look for the mineral patches running out. Just make it a set time. If you do a fast expand build, a zerg, Especially at similar timings for, for the other races. Eight minutes, pull eight workers out of your main, send them to your fourth or fifth. Eleven and a half minutes, eight workers off your natural. So you just want to leave eight workers there out to your fourth or fifth base as well. So it's a good habit that you can build that makes things really solid for you in the long run. Fourth command center is finishing up nice and early. Second factory is adding a reactor. And up to eight. Barracks here is Sarah, is uh, Maru. Serral, he's starting his 2-2. The armory is really late. Maru forgot his upgrades for a long time. And he hasn't really found any amazing trades. Obviously, he's not losing units, but he's not really slowing down Serral in any significant manner. Oh, he's being annoying here. Very annoying micro. And by the way, Serral's blocked himself from taking his own base there, just spamming tumors down. So, bit of a mistake. He needs to kill these two tumors to put a hatchery down here. Though he might not be planning on taking that for a long time. So it doesn't matter just yet. Infestation pits there. And that 30 second upgrade lead for Maru, it's gone, guys. He starts 2 2. He's down 30, 40 seconds. 40 seconds now. It's a big slip up there. He starts a fifth command center. Maru's playing late game. Maru, as I said, Maru is so good at late game, and players are so bad at beating him there. Well, he's just so good at winning at late game, I should say. It's not they're bad at beating him, it's just they're not able to match him. Maru's just leaning into his command centers this time. So I think he wants to go straight into the iron bank i think he senses maybe that serral's being a little more uh timid after that last game and he's not as worried about just getting overwhelmed but he's got almost nothing at home he's got three tanks a few hellbats and marauders and marines so who knows maybe there was a window for serral to bust in serral's going hive already 
Dude, that's sick. He's going to be able to start 3-3 before Terran. Oh, this is a great position for Serral. And he's, yeah, he's looking pretty fantastic. The question is, as always, what are you going to do against a man who's building the Iron Bank? This gives up momentum. If he just goes Hydraling Bane, Serral wins. He could just honestly swamp him with Hydraling Bane right now. I actually think he could kill Maru. Yeah, I, I do, but he's not going for it. I think he's just going to go Lurkers. He's kind of splitting his army up. But he should absolutely be looking to bust in. And he's going to kind of look for it now. I have a bad feeling about this Widowmine, guys. I'm a Serral fanboy. I love Maru, but I'm a Serral fanboy. And I have a bad feeling about this Widowmine. There's no logical reason. I just I feel bad things are going to happen. That's one Hydra. Who cares? That's fine. Oh, I'm not a Warlock. Thank God. Thought I could see into the future. I sensed a, pro a prophecy coming in. Thought that Widow Mine was going to kill 30 Banes. Yeah, he's going super Lurker focused against a guy who's already going up to 5 base Ghost. This is kind of shit for Serral. I think Lurkers are the last thing you want here against Maru because he goes straight to late game so quick. Oh, he gets some good Baneling hits. But he's taking some tank shots. Oh! Down here! Oh, goodbye Planetary! Does click the Planetary. I would have loved to see him chase those SCVs though. I think, I think he could have got 8 or 10 more SCVs. Problem for him, there's a 5th base up. Losing that command center doesn't matter. Maru does not care about that. You needed to kill the army here as Serral, not the economy. And this honestly, he's going Nidus Worm now. I don't want to say this is a foregone conclusion, but I want to say, looking at how the last game went, Maru is in such a better position than that last game. Last game, similar scenario, similar attack. And, and Maru was way down. He was down like way more supply, had no economy. In this case, Maru is already up to four orbital command centers. He's already up to four orbital command centers with more building. He's got multiple planetaries. Okay, Bigling Bane Hydrobus comes in. He's going to bust the wall down, attacking into a bit of a choke point though. He's trying to break the wall. I mean, he'll kill the tanks and, and then he'll pull back there. It looks like more Lings came in. Does get some of the SCVs, but the planetary finishes. And that means there's a planetary there, planetary there. I do like the Zergling Burrow, very nice. He's going to try and knight us into the main base, but missile turrets are already up. Maru is in full turtle mode, and there's just this thing where I think it's partially because he's just so confident against Lurkers, and I really do think you can beat him with Broodlord and Faster. It's a big micro dance, and I honestly think that Serral, the reason he's not doing it is he doesn't have to do that versus Clem. Ma where is Serral's practice is from a couple guys, Hero Marine and Clem, and they cannot do what Maru's been doing in this series. They're good late game, they are not this good late game. And as a result, Serral can kill them with Lurker Ling Bane Multiprong. Can he do it versus Maru though? Gets the Liberator down, the Planetary gets bursted. Blows that up, I mean, he's killing a lot of command centers. The, the question is, is it at a quick enough rate? Because the, the Terran is still on four bases. And he's like, dude, I will take these trades all day. Every time you have to blow up planetaries to kill a 550 resource structure, I guess it's 700 resources because it's 150 minerals, 150 gas on top of 400. But either way, EMP misses the Vipers there. The Hydraling Bane coming in. He wants to kill this army. He's got to deny that. Burrowed Zergling sticking the middle finger up in the air. This guy wanted to burrow, but the command center had already relanded. So this guy, unfortunately, not able to get through that one. The burrowed guy down there forcing these units to stim down to the bottom right to clear that up. Very annoying. Good nuisance play there by Serral. He tries to get the Nidus up in the back of the main. He's going to go for it. Changeling's coming in. Where is that Nidus worm? He didn't have it controlled. Double! Double Nidus! What does it mean? It's so beautiful, man. He's got, he's got lurkers in it as well. Lots of lurkers loading in. I think he gets one of these out. And the Ling Bane going to run at the front. The Zergling's going to be defended by the Ghosts. And the second Nidus barely unable to pop. I'd love to see another double Nidus here in a moment. Of course, he's got to wait for that cooldown. I'm going to select these Nidus Worms. Uh, doesn't actually show on this overlay, so never mind. Denying the bottom right base is Serral. This, this is... Honestly, I think Serral's actually not trading too bad, considering he is denying bases. And he's, he's, look at that. Just is like, goodbye gas, goodbye an SCV or two. There we go. And then there we go. Viking does clean up that Overseer. No more double Nidus play. Ghosts chasing him back. Serral's going to add an Infestor. I like it. Burrow plus a few Infestors. Potentially the secret to his success here. He's been so good with those Ambush Festers. Oh, Snipey Snipe. Snipe. What are these Ghosts doing, bro? Oh my god. He literally, Maru accidentally parred those Ghosts there, guys. He did not realize that was a real big mistake from Maru, which he luckily got away with. Okay, here we go. Like a Ling Bane. He's going to come in. Hydras, Vipers as well. Abducting a few of these liberators. These are good value trades. Yep, but he's got to pull back. 
to his lurkers, which... Oh! Doesn't get all of those. A few snipes do come down, picking off some of his units. Very nice play here from Maru. He's got a lovely upgrade tab with the 333 coming in. Carapace plus three is done for the Zerg. Plus two range coming in as well. Does not have that plus three melee, but doesn't really need it too urgently. Lurk is coming on forward. The Hydra Bane coming on in. He does have a full energy Viper there. Could abduct that Liberator. Get rid of those two would be a nice way of opening things up. But a planetary in the bottom right. How many orbitals do we have, guys? Still only four. He has not got the Iron Bank. Maru in survival mode. But as he maxes out, he says, Oh, I have minerals. Sweet. Command center goes down. He should be dropping three or four more of those with that big bank that he's got. You can see the scan there. The lurkers dancing. Ling Bane Hydra Viper on the left. But the tanks are layered. The Infestor does see this army coming. Oh, I don't think he can get the Unburrow, can he? He's going to maybe go for it, but he doesn't have the numbers. There's no way he can break that position. The barracks starting to burn there. Zergling, though. Not really going to get too much done. Maru just calmly gets an SCV to repair the barracks. No shits given. Oh, Hydraling Bane. That Infestor almost gets blasted, but not quite. And he's going to go right back up there. There's an accident to pull that Infestor away quite clearly. Lurkers on the right side do come in, but the Snipes and the Libs say, Get wrecked! That unit's lost tab getting nasty at this point. Serral running around with his Lurker Ling Bane Viper. He's not finding a way in. I honestly feel the Lurkers are completely worthless in this situation. I actually really think... I, I, the only thing I think they're good for is killing a planetary. But Banelings have already been doing that job. So they're just doubling up on the same job. I think he needs to go pure Ling Bane Hydra Viper. If he wants to stay in the mid game. Or he's got to go Broodlord and Festa Lake game. But the longer he's staying on Lurkers, I mean, the more useless they are. They lag behind this army. They're not doing anything. Uh, double Spire coming up in the back of the natural there. Got bases coming down. Drones in the top left as well. Lurkers going to run down the left side. Still some tanks layered though. So many tanks, man. And he can just lift that orbital. He's going to try and get on the tanks. I mean, he'll get rid of one of them. Okay, so he will evacuate this base. Runs through the middle at the same time. He does get a few tanks with the Zerglings. Nicely done. Unfortunately for him, though, he loses a hatchery on the right side at the same moment. Does he have an Infestor in the back? No, he does not anymore. He's going to get rid of some of the barracks. That's kind of nice. There are only eight barracks right now. So getting some of those down would be really sick. He's going to pull back, realizing it's only a matter of time till the ghosts come in and get on top of him. Seven SCVs went down somewhere. I guess that was all over here. Zergling's on the right side. Going to try and dart on in. Could grab that missile turret. Not a bad pick off there. Does set that one on fire. It will burn down. Zergling's going to fall. And the double spire. The pathogen glands. That's right. It's time for Infested Broodlord, baby. It's, it's the only way to play against this sort of style in the mega late game. The tanks will become a very weak unit once you get that out. But he's already on his way to 2 1 or 1 2 air upgrades. No doubt Fusion Core and Range Libs will be coming up next. It's just a handful of bio units. Even if a few Marines and Marauders go down, Maru doesn't really care too much. His orbital count up to five orbitals right now. He's got two more command centers just finished there. Another one building over here. Starting to maraud forward on this map. The units lost tab 10,000 resources difference right now. Still got a lot of Lurkling Bane does Serral, so he's got to look to kind of trade this off so he can replace it with better units. And look at that beautiful parasitic bomb there. Does kill quite a few of those air units. Uh, Liberator and Medivac gets the other lives quite low. He's trying to fight as best he can his Serral. He's getting pushed back. He's just going to try and bleed out some of these basic units. Replace them. Where are his Infestors? He's got three Infestors, two Vipers. I'd like to see a few more Infestors mixed in, but I think he feels he needs the Broodlords to stop this push first and foremost. I think Maru realizes what he's going up against now. When are those Broodlords going to morph? I guess that Greatest Spire just finished. We'll see them morph momentarily. And there we go. Morph him. Serral, he's got Supply Free to build at least a few. It's time, son. There we go. Seven Broodlords going down. Going to get things started at the very least. He's got Queens on the right. Lingbane Lurker on the left side. And he will get a few of those Marauders, but takes a big tank volley. A few Lings on the left side. We'll get that Siege tank. Nicely done. Adrenal plus two Zerglings, of course, trading pretty decently against Siege tanks on their own. Hatchery goes down in the top left. Siege tank sieging the gases over here as well. This is a problem for Serral. He can't afford to lose any more bases right now. Losing that base on the left already hurts. He's got a big bank, though. 
So this is not a last ditch Broodlord transition. This is a, I'm gonna go to Broodlords much earlier. And I'm actually gonna have a bank to work with. Problem for him, Maru also has that bank. Maru starting Thors. He's starting Libreach. He's starting plus two air attack. So he's got all of these tools that'll help him a lot in the later stages. And Broodlords are gonna move to the right side along with the Infestor Viper. He's gonna try and pick away at these siege tanks. Of course, Maru also has to start phasing his units out, get rid of some of the tanks. Some of the Marines and Marauders, potentially. He's got to get maybe 10, 15 SCVs thrown away if he gets a few more Orbitals. He's up to seven Orbitals. The Iron Bank is almost there at this stage. Cancels a hatch there. Cancels or even kills a hatchery on the right side. That Siege Tank shoots the Queens. The Queens say, get out of here, you dickhead. They could kill that Liberator if they choose to. The Broodlord count is growing. We're at 11 Broodlords, 12 on the way. And remember, keeping some Banelings ready, so if the Ghosts try to jump on you, can be effective just to force those Ghosts to run away. But what you're going to see, if we see this late game micro improve from Blackburn, Serral cannot just grab his whole army and A-move it, unless he's already landed a Fungal. If he's already caught all the Ghosts with Fungal, he can do that, but otherwise, he's just going to make himself easy targets. As he moves forward, he'll get EMP'd. Um, it's hard for Maru to attack into Serral and land EMPs, but if he's just defending against a big thrust, Bit of an ogre move, which is what Serral kind of went for on Blackburn. Me make a move now and drop spells on you. And Maru just dropped defensive EMPs. And the spellcasters of Serral walked into them. The infestors walked into the liberators. Got snipes coming down on the broodlords there. Good transfusers though, not a single broodlord dies. Space going up on the left side. And Serral should definitely be denying this base. Maru, I think, realizes this is already dead. I'm surprised he doesn't just make an orbital. Just give up on it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, this will buy some time. Serral moving some spores forward. Very cute. He's, look at the way he's got a single infester up front. So he's like, look, if those ghosts come, we'll do it. And yeah, nice cancel in the planetary a second before it finishes. Lifts that off. So this game could go in many different ways. I've talked about how Broodlord Infester is one of the elite compositions. And I feel that while Terran technically can beat it, it and, and Zerg can technically beat the ghost limb, it really just comes down to, to the engagements and the micro on both sides. And I, I don't think any player is favored here. And this person was like, oh, fuck off, pig. Obviously, nukes and EMPs are better because you can scan and see everything. And then there's Terran players like, no, pig, man. Fungal and Brewlords is literally the most broken thing in the world. And, you know, and then there's a few people like, well, let's actually see who's the better player because I'm absolutely convinced it's the better player who wins this scenario. I've, I told you guys, I've seen Solar, the best Broodlord Infestor player in the world, beat Maru, beat Peon, beat these guys in late game Broodlord Infestor, be way more efficient than them. And it's a slow grind, but over time he just breaks them down and he just wins every fight. And you're like, oh, it's so sick to watch. Can Serral do that? I don't know, man. He loses a hatchery there. It's not the most important. There's no point even replacing it. You can just long distance mine those minerals. This, this game is about efficiency at this point, guys. It's not about anything else. Now, Banelings and Hydras kind of struggling to be efficient against these bloody marauders but obviously you can see maru wants to throw these units away he's like dude just take him just take him mate i don't actually want to keep these anymore and trying to move the spores forward very useful so spores help defend from libs and at this stage of the game with this much bank i would actually like to see serral invest in more spore crawlers he's got a few across the map i'd like to see a lot of them and him respreading his creep because notice maru realizes if he can just secure these places with planetaries and turrets he can deny some of these bases. And when you're facing off next to each other, especially with some nukes potentially coming in, we've got one nuke already loaded up in the Ghost Academy, you can start to just push him back slowly with nukes. So as the Zerg, you want to get your spores up as far forward as possible so you've got room to pull back. And that's a lot of full energy ghosts, that is. Did he just snipe one of those ghosts? Uh, one of those changelings, I mean. He's running forward. Where's the, where's the infestors? Oh, he gets one snipe off. Serral a little clumped on those infestors. You really want to spread those a little more if you can. Oh! He impedes three of those infestors. Very nice. Very nicely. Actually, I think it was only one. Sorry, it was only one infestor that got hit there. Got some queens as well. Low on energy there after their transfusers. Now, Ghost Lib, Tank Thor. This is such a complicated, convoluted army. I don't know how Maru uses it so well. He's made the medevac boost upgrade, because why the heck not? He's got Neo Steel armor. He's got high sec auto tracking. So that's turret and planetary range it's building armor and bunker uh, capacity it's all the rare upgrades you only see in the end game and at this point they both have gigantic banks but maru wants to push 
And this sort of push can be hard to stop. The Broodlords are out of position. He doesn't have many spores backing this up. Remember, if Maru ever shoves on top of him and you don't have enough spores, what's your anti-air to actually kill the libs? Two Corruptors? Five Hydras? Some Queens? These are not great units, guys. SCVs throwing their lives away. Oh, Ling, Ling run by going after the infrastructure. That's very nice. He gets one of the orbitals. Still 10 orbitals left behind that, though, so... I'm not sure Maru cares too much. He could actually run in the base right now. Maru's main is wide open. Zergling run bys, just killing infrastructure, can be super efficient in the late game. You do need a lot of supply for it, though. Supply is not what Serral has right now. And... Gotta watch out for this. Oh, my God. Okay, see, see the way... The Liberators are, are to die in a Spore Crawlers. One of them goes down just to the Spores. It's all about the Spellcasters. Now, can Serral land these spells? He gets a Fungal, doesn't hit any Ghosts. He throws a Microbial Shroud there, so that his Infestors and Queens don't die as fast as the Liberators. That's very cute. I haven't seen that used in this matchup before. Normally used against Protoss, but it does help against those Liberators. Halves those Concord Cannons from what's going to be 90 damage to 45 damage once that plus 3 kicks in. Queen's going in and out. Another Liberator does get taken out. A few more spores behind this would be brilliant. He needs to get a Broodlord volley off, but he needs Infestors. The Infestors are too far behind. He could get sniped here. He gets one volley off with just a few of them and a nuke. I didn't even hear the nuke alert. I had no idea that was coming in. Holy crap. There's too much going on right now. Um, does avoid it, though. Does Serral. The Broodlord's going to be launching down. The Spores and Queens taking out these units. The Broodlord's are throwing forward volleys, and they're killing the Thors. The Thor front line going down. A bunch of the Vikings fall as well. Great transfusers landing. That there was a delicious engagement for Serral. And Serral, guess what? He's only down three, six, about six, seven thousand resources right now. Seven thousand resources behind. That was a very good fight for him. That's the sort of fight you want. Maru was the one who overcommitted forward. It wasn't a crazy dive like Serral did on Blackburn, but it was enough to be a problem. Now look at this. Maru's just looking for pickoffs. He's like, sweet, caught you slipping. He grabs two queens, but he loses a ghost. That's probably a good trade for Serral. I don't think you mind losing a queen or two. Serral should probably replace them though. Because if you're playing a long, slow term efficiency, the queens in the last fight with their transfusers across the Broodlords were huge and they only cost you minerals. If you keep just trading these fancy units, Obviously, you're going to run out of gas way before minerals. You end up with thousands and thousands of minerals left over, and, and it's a big problem. So I wouldn't mind him adding just four or five more queens in there. Keep six queens alive at all time. Of course, he has 101 lava. Um, they are spotted lava. They are Dalmatian lava. At least that's all I like to imagine. Um, anyways. Oh, big fungal! Maru's going to dick town! He does click on the infestors and kills a few of them with his tanks, but he just lost a bunch of stuff. Now, there's a lot of Thors coming in. Unless he can get a blinding cloud, I don't think Serral can take this fight. Where's the blinding cloud? He needs it. He needs that blinding cloud. The ghosts are kind of forced back. He goes parasitic bomb. I don't know if that's the way to do it, is it? It's so, it's so many broods. It's so many broods that it might just be okay. Oh, he goes for another big fungal. There's a nuke coming down on his army right now. Will he be able to stop it? More fungals, no blinding clouds. That was the big missing detail here, and it's why he lost so many guys. But he does kill the ghost, and he only lost a few of these broodlords. He's fucking Maru up. Oh my god, only 4,000 units between them now. And that is huge. Cheryl is winning these fights. I talked about how I can never make the Thor, the Thor composition work. I sometimes can with the libs if I can totally zone them out. But if they use Vipers and Infestors, then you need to EMP the Vipers while libs zone the Infestors. And pushing through spores, near impossible. I, I'm looking at this and I'm going, well, Maru's sticking with Thor lib. He thinks Thor lib is the answer. I mean, he was one of the guys who did this in like early Legacy versus someone. Thor lib ghost and he made it look broken. But people were much worse back then. They didn't know how to use dual spellcasters the way Serral's using them. And Serral, yeah, he's looking fantastic. I mean, if you look at the units lost up, he's lost three Broodlords, eight Infestors, one Viper. And how many Thors did he kill? Nine Thors, 11 Ghosts, 10 Liberators. So in this kind of late game unit composition, it really feels like Serral's been trading off a few of his weaker units, a few Infestors going down. And Maru's been losing a lot of big valuable guys. Now, there's no spores back here, and that's a problem. I told you guys he's going to need spores across the whole map. Because if Maru pushes away from the spores, that's where you go, wait a second, where's Serral's anti-air? How does he kill Liberators, guys? He can't. He can't kill Liberators. So Maru can try and go kill his tech and his drones now. Now, obviously, the drones aren't the most important. They're all on the left side. But I think Serral's going to need to rebuild his tech, to be honest. Because I don't know how he gets on top of that. How does he go around to deal with that? So he's going to send his own Lurker Bane Hydra and go, ah, well, you kill my production. And he should really go up the production. But you know what? 
He sees Maru react and he immediately pulls back. Very mature decision. Maru does not want to lose his production. Maru's like, ah, not worth it. Pull home. Ah, not worth it. Pull home. Okay. Oh, this is getting really weird now. I don't know if you want to fight across this gap. A Serral? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Watch out for the EMP on the left. Big fungal lands on the goose, but the Hellbats are guarding them. The Thors landing great hits from the right side. The Vipers unable to land their blinding clouds. That's too many Thors unable to take that fight. Where is the anti-air damage? A few Corruptors and Spores doing what they can. It's not as much as easy like. And remember, he doesn't have transfuses. A lot of these Broodlords damaged from earlier. The tech that he started rebuilding going down. Great scans. Taking out a bunch of those Infestors. And if you lose the Infestors, then the Ghosts become scary. But there's only five Ghosts. It's mostly Thor Lib right now. And these Libs are taking a lot of damage from the Spore Crawlers. A lot of them weak. I think a Parasitic Bomb would not be a bad move at this point. I think it might be time for that Parasitic Bomb. Either that or a big Blinding Cloud. Banelings are going to run in from the right side. They're not going to do anything. Lurker Hydra starting to clear out some of the middle uh, buildings and infrastructure. Here we go. He's going for it. Parasitic Bomb goes down, as does Fungals. A big Broodlord wave takes out a Thor. Well, a couple of the Libs do fall there. But how many Broodlords are left? 17. And remember... He does not have Blinding Cloud now. Those Vipers are almost out of energy. A big nuke getting launched on top of his army. Now, Serral does not want to lose this base. It's his most important base. He throws down a fungal. He may hit the nuking ghost, but it does not kill or interrupt that nuke. No, 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 no! He gets clipped! A few Broodlords and a bunch of drones go down. He stayed just a second too long. He gets clipped by the nuke. He's at the same time on top of the production. Lurkers are killing Thors rather nicely, as are the Hydras. And Serral still has Big Bank. And remember, his production did not die. Losing this base sucks for him. But he's actually trading pretty well over here. The Thor's trying to dodge some Lurker Spines. No, it's not. It just doesn't have any vision. And a bunch of Lurkers... Uh, do go down, but they kill a whole bunch of Thors. I think it's a decent trade. Meanwhile, the army's still running around here for Maru. Now, Maru's back ahead. 9,000 resources. Those last fights, killing all the drones, the spores, has really, and the hatchery and the infestation pit, it's added a lot more to his value. There's still plenty of gas in the bank, though, for Serral, but where are the queens? This is where, I, I said it earlier, guys, in this long, slow-term battle, you need queens. You gotta keep building queens because these Broodlords, he's got like 25, but they're all like one or two Thor shots from death. And that's a big problem. Thor's right now doing 47 damage versus massive from a whopping 11 range. The Broodlord only has 10 range. It does 24 damage, which is, of course, a big problem for Serral. Now, he's got one random swarm host in here. He says, I'll throw my babies for the cause. Yeah! Yeah! Commuzergism. Let's go. I don't know why it's Commuzergism. It is, apparently. I don't effing know. Anyway, Broodlords, Infestors, Corruptors. Shit's going crazy. Big army. It's Mass Thor. Mass Thor is not that good if it gets hit by Neural. But he's got 13 ghosts backing it up. And there's only two Vipers, and they're all damaged. They're all like one or two shots from death. Yeah, dude, this is a big problem. Infestors get caught rallying out. Oh, no. The, the, the Broodlords need time to heal. He transfuses one of them. I mean, if he can fight in a choke point, I think Serral can do this. Oh, he loses one, two, one, two, two Broodlords. Almost lost a third one there. He's lost a total of 13 in this game. Another Broodlord just gets snapped there at the edge of range. And where's the Blinding Cloud fungal combo? EMP lands on the Infestors. He goes for the Blinding Cloud. A massive Zerglings comes in with the Broodlords. The Banelings trying to find the Ghost. Perfect starter step on the Ghost to avoid the worst of it. How are these Thors still alive? That was a beautiful engagement. Serral's got to pull back. He's got to pull back. He's lost a bunch of his Infestors, his Broodlords, his Vipers. Okay, he's going to try and keep fighting these one at a time. But remember, he's going to trade a Broodlord each time he does that, probably. More Fungals coming in, interrupting the Snipes. Kills a Ghost there at maximum range. My One of my hands is on my head right now. I am holding my head in my hands, literally, because this is such an intense Game 6. And remember, if Serral could bring this back, they can have a Game 7! <laughs> And that, if there's ever a moment worthy of a testy pop, I think it's this game right here. This base is still so fresh. I can't believe this base is still so fresh. Feels like Serral was so focused on the micro. Maybe that one wasn't saturated. Um, Maru's still mining over there and over... Th oh, he's not mining that base properly either. Guys, transfer your workers to the fresh bases. What are you doing? Okay, well, he's got workers going to the left side of the map. You've got a full base there. I mean, it is more important to take the middle of the map off your opponent, like I've said, right? Transfer your workers down there. I talk about it a lot. But um, it's Serral's out. Serral's out of money right now. He's got no income. EMPs land on the Infestors. Those Infestors, he's got four more Fungals, maybe five in total in there. 
He does, he's got two Vipers in the back. Is it going to be enough, though? Because those Thors have such extreme range, and that's what's so scary. The Lings are so good versus the Thors. He's up in army supply. Serral, if he takes the right fight, he can still win this, but not like that! No! No, 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 no! Serral taking a god-awful fight! Where are the Blinding Clouds? Why are the Blinding Clouds so late? Serral got his hotkeys messed up! I guarantee you, Serral got his hotkeys messed up there, guys. Yet he gets some murals off and still ends up clearing the army, but that was an awful engagement for Serral. I do think Serral has technically the better army here, but he's got to manage so many different pieces. And I think he screwed the pooch there, guys. Look at the supply. Remember, Maru's mining out both middle bases. There's no mining left for Serral on his 26 workers. He's got two mineral patches there. This base will come back up. But there's seven Thors building at a time. Maru, seven Thors, blue flame hellbats to burn up the, the broodlings so they don't do much damage. And the ghosts kicking ass. I, Serral was up 10 supply in army supply in that last fight, but he really messed it up. I do think he got a bit over eager. His vipers were a bit too far behind and he only dropped one blinding cloud all battle. It should have been at least two or three. Uh, once your, bro your broodlords do want to go in first to make sure they take the, Thor the Thor's first volley, because otherwise your Vipers might get shot down before they throw their spells out if they go in first. Um, just due to the long range. But it's it's a problem, man. If you don't get those Blinding Clouds down, the Thors just do so much damage, man. Three armor versus 47 damage. So you're doing 44 damage a shot against 225 hit points. You guys can do the maths in the comment section on how many Thor shots. I think it's about six Thor shots to kill a Broodlord. Not that many, and look how fast they shoot with this 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 modern 250 millimeter Punisher cannon. Oh damn! This is the last base. He's got to defend it, but he just can't, mate. He's out. Numbered. He's out. Gun DMPs landing on the infestors, and at the end of the day, Maru is the late game god. He is the king. He is on a map pool he does not like. He is dead in game five. He turns it around and wins. He is absolutely dead in that in that in that previous game. And yet he brings it back anyway. And that's what I call a Chad Gamer. Uh, Maru, an absolute beast, a legend. And I, I want to watch that previous fight one more time. And I just want to point out that I think he messed up his control group. Serral did here. Because look, he kind of catches this army a little unawares. Starts the fight with the fungal. He pulls back. He's like, gather it up, boys. But his vipers are a bit far away. And his broodlords aren't all together. He needs to have all of his broodlords stacked together. So a lot of his broodlords are not going to be fighting. So that's a problem, right? And he, he comes forward and he's like, nah, fuck it, let's go, kind of thing. And it's like, where are those vipers? Where are those blinding? So, okay, we're gonna see it in a moment. Let's watch this fight one more time before we finish it up. So the broodlords are going in. At this point, you can tell he's 100% committed. He's like, go! Because he's attacking into the center of the thought. So this is already a super dangerous fight. Now, why is this such a dangerous fight, guys? Because the Thors actually have a decent battle line where a lot of them can shoot at once. Whereas if you were, say, over here with your Broodlords, it'd be much more confident to attack because you're only fighting two at a time. The other ones are all stuck behind each other and they have to kind of pile around and get down here to fight you. Whereas in this case, you know you're walking into like maybe at least five, probably six Thors. One, two, three, four, five, six Thors all shooting at once. Now, the other thing is the Viper's very far behind, but I think the reason he went is because he saw the ghosts were exposed and he said, oh, if my Lings get on the ghosts, he can't EMP, he can't like, you know, EMP me very well. And we can land the spells. But the Vipers come in kind of late. And it's like, okay, where's where's the mural? Because he could have already started that. And then Blinding Cloud comes in. But only one. Now maybe he didn't have enough Viper energy there. He does end up getting two murals off. You can imagine if those murals or those Blinding Clouds were even at second faster. He keeps a lot more Broodlords alive here. And it makes a pretty big diff. Oof. Nonetheless, guys, amazing late game for both players. This was a truly glorious way to finish it. And what an epic, epic series. 44 Broodlords, 19 Infestors, 3 Vipers for 25 Ghosts, 36 Thors, and 22 Liberators in this late game. Beautiful play from both sides. GG's. Maru is the King of Battles champion. And not just that, guys. He is unashamedly easily the best player in the world right now this cements an absolutely incredible hot streak where maru is the, i mean you want to say he's the greatest of all time 
right now, it is really hard to argue that point because the big argument against it has been that he drops the ball in online tournaments and that he drops the ball in international tournaments and he drops the ball in world championships. The only one of those arguments that is that is still alive after this month of dominance, this two, three months of online international dominance, the only argument is that he still hasn't brought it to a world championship. The moment Maru wins a world championship or even gets to a finals of one, which you don't think he's ever done before, then it's, it's beyond undisputed at that point. Potentially the greatest player of all time and one of the greatest performances in this series of all time, Maru, is your King of Battles champion. GG, guys.